everyone. Let's rise and meditate in the prayers. Good service for today. All right. Giving all praises to Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for this blessed Sabbath and not coming together to worship the Most High through Christ in spirit on this blessed Sabbath day. We'll begin with the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. All praises to the Most High, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, amen. 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 The Ten Commandments, Exodus 20. And the Heavenly Father spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. 
For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Our praises to the Most High in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Psalms 20. The Lord, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Our praise is the most high in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Amen. The two great commandments, Mark 12, 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, Name me this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none of a commandment greater than these. All praises the most high in the name of Jesus Christ from Nazareth we pray, that the Holy Spirit be upon us and the whole church, that we may be edified in your word, and that we may look well unto our goings, and that we may apply the scriptures and submit ourselves to doing your will and departing from sin, and that we may abide in the faith and endure the many temptations, trials, tribulations, afflictions that we may face all the days of our life, and that in your blessing and your grace and mercy that you may deliver us from the bondage of sins and bless us with your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Christ bless everyone. Bless Sabbath. Let's go to the Gospel of Mark, the tenth chapter. We'll start at verse 28. Mark 10, 28. We'll read it to about the 31st verse. So today's topic, Lord Willen will try to cover a few scriptures as pertaining to enduring, to um, enduring troubles and temptations in marriages. So topic is enduring in troubles and temptations in marriages. No. And this 
These scriptures apply to all of us, right? Married and unmarried. But the scriptures tell us that let him that think if he standeth take heed lest he fall. So these scriptures apply to all of us. Right? So let's get into the scriptures. Mark 10, 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. So who's Peter, one of the twelve apostles here? Who's he speaking to? And saying, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Christ, right? The Messiah, the same Christ who called Peter as well as the other eleven, handpicked them to be his servants. And in doing so, what did Peter and the disciples have to acknowledge that they had to do in order to be true servants of Christ? Forsake all, Forsake all right? And Christ is going to expound on, on that as far as what the all meant. Right? And then the blessings that's going to come with forsaking all, with denying ourselves and being a true believer and true follower of Christ. Right? So Christ answers now, verse 29, says, And Jesus answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for whose sake? For my sake. This is Christ here speaking. And the Gospels. See? So in following Christ, we're going to be a, an, we have to first and foremost be an example of the gospel. So what is the gospel? Christ saying for his sake as well as the gospel's sake. What is another term for, for the gospel? The good news, the good news right? So and how is the good news being delivered? Beginning through who first? Through, through the Christ, right? Until Christ was to, to hear all things, right? And where did Christ get his message from? Where did Christ get his doctrine from? The Most High. The Most High. See that? So all roads go through Christ and then all the way back up to the Most High. Right? And so in following Christ and being a servant of Christ, what does that entail? Well, Christ told us. There, have no man, there is no man that hath left house. Right? So some of us may have to forsake a house. Right? What does it mean to... to to forsake house. In what sense? In order to follow Christ, you have to uh, follow him. He didn't know the way outside that including the things that may even be in our own home. So if we're going to do the things that Christ has done, it, it doesn't mean to, to leave your loved ones alone completely, but to not follow them and make guys. Right, but we, we're talking about a house right now. Like, because we're going to get to the loved ones, right? So we're talking Christ is being specific, right? And if, and if we um, think about certain scriptures out of the Bible in which there were many of Israel, right, that had to forsake houses in order to follow the Most High in Christ, right? Whereas others chose to conform. Others was just like, nah, I'm not leaving. I'm good here. I'm comfortable here, right? Did Mattathias and his sons and all the other believers that followed, that believed in the Most High through Christ, had to forsake their homes to truly follow the Most High during the 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 um, the, the oppression that the, the Greeks, the so-called white man during that time when they ruled as the Greeks, when they were oppressing Israel to the point where they were killing many of Israel. That wanted to, to abide in the commandments of the Most High. That, that wanted to keep the Sabbath days. That wanted to circumcise that male child on the eighth day. Right? And that, that refused to, to be defiled with, with fornication or unclean meats. Right? In order to properly do that, they had to leave their homes behind. They had, and in doing so, as you was mentioning, Theo, now that also includes who? Amongst those that they have to leave behind. Your family, right? Because some of your family may say, you know, ah, we, we love the way of the heathen, 
right? At that time, we spoke about the Greeks. They loved the way of, of the, the Greekish fashion, right? Which was promoting the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, right? Wickedness, right? That's why in, in the book of the Maccabees, it mentioned that wickedness increased, right? It escalated to, to, the, to its height during the time of the Greeks, right? And so as they were promoting wickedness, who were they compelling to do the same? The children of Israel. That was their number one target because all other nations, they willingly chose to follow after the way of the heathen, which was the Greeks at the time. Right? And we know all the gods of the nation, they, what do they have in common <laughs> outside of the, the God of Israel? They're all, they're all idols, right? They're, which means what? They're created by man. Right? They're, they're false images. And we know out of the scriptures how many gods are there. Uh, is there such a thing as the God, the God of the Hebrews, the Israelites, and then you have the God of the Canaanites, and then you have the God of the Egyptians, the God of, of the Chinese, the, the Arabs, Japanese? No, there's only one God that rules over all, right? And who was, who's the chosen seed of the God, of the true one and living God that exists in the heaven of heavens? Who, who's his seed? Who's the chosen people? Israel, right? That he chose above all nations to be his people and to serve him, right? And in doing so, we have to what? Abide by the commandments of the Most High that was taught to us through who? The Christ, the Messiah, right? So which means we're going to have to forsake in certain instances, right? Who should stay in time that Most High may have us go through trials and tribulations, afflictions, oppressions, right? Persecutions, which may mean that what? We may have to leave where we dwell. We may have, most I may say, okay, the, the gathering as far as where you guys are going to come together, whether you in this city, this country, this land, will be in some mountain somewhere. We'll be in some field somewhere. But the, the, the comforts of home, now most I is, 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 is not really per se to say, Chassing, but increasing the trial, I should say, right? And some trials may mean that what? We leave houses. Others, as we read in verse 29 in, in Mark 10, says, or brethren, right? So why is Christ promoting divisions in the homes? Why would some have to leave their brothers to follow after Christ? Why isn't the brethren, why, why isn't your brother, your brothers coming along? And then read it on, it says sisters and father or mother. Why isn't the whole household, you know, when, when the gospel is being revealed unto them, the truth of Christ is being taught unto them, why isn't all receiving it in, in joy and gladness and then forsaking all to be like-minded with the saints, with Peter, with the disciples here, as well as all the other members of the body that Christ was going to add to the church. Why would there be a separation here? Right? It's the same thing that you read in the Gospel of, of Matthew, right? Matthew, the 10th chapter. What's happening here? Where some will have to leave behind house, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife or children or lands. Well, the latter part of the verse, and I'll let you bring your point for you, the latter part of the verse is for, who, for whose sake? Christ's sake, right? For my sake and the gospel. Which if Peter, right? Matthew, John, James, Philip, right? If all the disciples, right? Including all the ones later that Christ was going to add unto the church out of the house of Israel, right? To be the elect, to be part of, of his body, what would, be, what would that mean for the ones that is not departing and not forsaking the world for Christ's sake. Where do they stand? Are they about the righteousness of the Most High through Christ, or are they about something else? And, and what is that something else, according to what Christ taught us out of the Scriptures? If they're not minded to, to depart from, from worldliness, from wickedness, for Christ's sake, then whose sake are they about? Satan, right? That's why Christ said no man could serve two masters, right? 
They might not, well, brother, I'm not following after Satan. You can say I'm following Satan. No, I'm just doing what I want to do. This Bible is not for me. The, the Bible has too many restrictions, and, and I can't go by that. Right? If, if, God, if that's what God requires of man, and his commandments say, you know, we can't fornicate, we can't murder, we can't commit idolatry, we can't steal, we can't lie, right? Nor can we take pleasures with people that's rejoicing in those things, right? We can't have fellowship with people that's, that's their mind is of worldliness, right? So, in doing so, right, what is the blessing? It says, but you shall receive an hundredfold. This is verse 30 in Mark 10. And now in this time, houses. So there may be a case where one may forsake a house, right? What's some scenarios? Because, or, or examples, I should say, that like, or like real life examples in which a brother or a sister or, or a husband and wife, right, a whole family had had to forsake a house for Christ's sake. But then that blessing, Christ said, you will receive a hundredfold now in this time. How is this? Can, can anyone think of an example in which whether you experience it yourself or have known of brothers or sisters that as they were having to make a decision, right? This is something that they're going through. This is a trial. This is a temptation. And then in that case, this scripture might come to mind, right? And then you're exhorting the brother and the sister because they kind of like, you know, they might be lacking understanding, right? And, and experience in the fact that they're not understanding yet how Christ has come to, br to bring a sword between a man and his household, right? And that sword is not necessarily Christ is saying, I want the house divided. It's going to be based on man's decision, right? The household's decision. The individuals in that house's decision, whether they're going to follow after Satan, wickedness, or depart from it and follow after Christ, right? Whereas some will in the household, but others will say, no, nah, I'm not seeing this Bible here. I'm not seeing how you're interpreting these scriptures here or how you're understanding these scriptures here. If that's the God and, and, and the Christ of the Bible and how we, I'm not for that, right? So in, 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 in saying it and speaking those words, right, whether in, in, in words or whether in their actions, well, there has to be, there's going to be a divide in that house, right? Because the scriptures tell us, can two walk together, lest they be agreed, right? So if you after the Most High in Christ, your mind's about the scriptures, the, the commandments of the Most High through Christ, but your father might not feel the same, right? Your mother might feel, not feel the same, your sister, your cousin. Right? In certain cases, your spouse, right, your wife, or the husband towards the wife. I'm not seeing this Bible here. Well, in, in, in time, the Most High is going to show you, okay, you, you may have to go your separate way. Right? And so, in reading this, the scripture says, the blessing is you trusting that the Most High will bless you with a house. right? Because Christ is saying it. You will receive a hundredfold in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with what? Persecutions. Right? So you may have a brother, right, that may have been in a relationship with a woman in the world, right? And then they both, whether the scripture is being introduced to the brother first or the, the sister first, right? The other spouse, the other person, right, whether they married as far as according to this world, you know, with marriage, license or whatnot, or they've just been together, right, been living together. But the, main, the thing that they may have lacked was the knowledge of the scriptures, the knowledge of Christ. Now, once the truth is being revealed, whether to the man or to the woman, right, what the other person that hasn't learned, the scripture has been revealed. So, hey, guess what? I stumbled on the brothers that was teaching the scriptures, apostles' doctrine, you know, whether in person or whether online, the Facebook, YouTube, right, word of mouth, right? 
Most High starts to reveal the scriptures, reveal Christ unto this brother or to this sister here. Right? Now all praises, the, the, the hope is that you bring it home. Your wife sees it, your children sees it in the case where there's children in a relationship, right? That's that's the hope, that's the prayer, right? But it doesn't always turn out that way. Right? So you may have had you may have a brother that through patience, you know, he's trying to deal with the sister, trying to show her scriptures, but she's fixed, her mind is made up. This is not for her, at least not now. Right? And so she may be hindering a brother from applying the scriptures, from from turning his life around into Christ. Right? And so in prayer. Most I will reveal, okay, this is not a woman for you. Well, in the case of the sister, she's a believer, right? And the brother's not trying to hear it. Right? He still want to go out there and be worldly, do whatever he's been doing, and expect her to conform and to, and to remain in that lifestyle with him. Right? She may have to depart in time. Right? And so what would be the blessing later on through Christ? Well, Most High is telling us, it's Christ is speaking it here. If we have faith and we trust in the process that we forsake all for the Most High, when the Most High in Christ, the Most High, the scriptures tell you, he's not a man that he should lie. Well, Christ and the Most High one, as far as in, 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 in holiness, in righteousness, right? If, if, would Christ lie about this, what he's saying here unto Peter and the disciples? No. So he's saying we shall receive an hundredfold. In this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, and children, and lands. So it doesn't say here, but does, does that also include husbands in the case of a sister that may have had to forsake a, a man that she was with that wasn't about the most high? He's not trying to change. Is Christ referring that in time, if it's his will, he may bless his sister with a husband in the faith that's going to follow the most high, that's going to be a true head unto her? Yes, the same thing for a man that may have to leave a woman, right? That's not choosing to follow the Most High through Christ. Most High will bless him with a good wife, right? But what will come along with that, the latter part of the verse? With what? It says, we shall receive in this time houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, and children, and lands. With what? What's the, what's, the, what's the word there that says in verse 30 here? The latter part of verse. Persecutions, right? So what does that mean? Because sometimes we, we miss that. We, or we overlook that part there. Oh yeah, see, Most High is going to bless us with better brothers and, and sisters that's going to be about the Most High in Christ. That's going to be in one mind, one accord to do the will of Most High. But what's going to come with it? Does that mean now everyone's always going to be in the spirit 100% of the time? You know, there, there's, there's no opportunity, there's no chance for Satan to get in. With that, with that good wife that the Most High will bless the brother with, that, that forsook all for Christ. Same thing for a sister. Now Most High bless her with a good husband, right? That's, his mind is about the Most High in Christ. He's trying to learn of Christ and then to instruct her and to deal with her according to knowledge in the marriage. Is everything going to be perfect? No issues? Same thing with everything else we've read. The houses, the lands, right? Does that mean now we're not going to go through trials, tribulations, afflictions, persecutions? No, Christ said it's going to come with that. Because that's one of those things that when, when Satan entered into this world, right, through Adam and Eve, right? What came with it? Sin. Right? Now we could overcome those sins through Christ, through the Christ, but that's that's a work in progress. Right? A marriage is not gonna be built to the to, to its true perfection overnight. Right? That takes time. That takes learning of the most high through Christ, beginning with the man, and then the, the woman being one flesh with him, being joined with him, right? They're building that bond, they build they're building that relationship, they're growing, they're maturing in Christ together. Right? But let's not forget that what that's also going to include the persecutions. It's going to include temptations. It's going to include trials. It's going to include troubles. Right? And it says, 
and in the world to come, eternal life. Now, at the second coming of Christ, when he introduces and he sets up the new heavens and the new earth, right? When all wickedness is stamped out. Now we're not dealing, okay, with persecution. You come in home, okay, you may have to deal with an issue at home with your wife or with your children or amongst the church, right? Because all Israel is going to be perfect. It's going to be made perfect in Christ, right? Where we're not, hey, brother, let me correct you. Hey, sister, what you did there, what you said there was an offense because we're going we're gonna to be, we're going to be as Christ is, right? We're going to be perfect. Right, but in this present time, as we working to get to that point, right, we're being prepared, we're being built up, right, we're being cleansed from all the sins that we've been privy to in this wicked world. It's going to take time for that growth and maturity to take place within us, right? And so, the focus, right, because this, this, what Price was saying in verse thirty, is we could go at length as far as classes dealing with you know dealing with brothers you know loving your brother as you love yourself same thing as far as when it comes to possessions how do we address it how do we deal with with financial situation in this present world but at the same time making a priority price right and then not making the your, your god that money or that possession right so let's go to uh first corinthians the seventh chapter. So we're done here in Mark. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, verse 20. So it says, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called right? so we're going to see where Paul is going with this as far as what is he referring to abiding in the same calling he kind of touched up on it in the previous verses but we'll continue on in, in, in this chapter here right? what does Paul mean in the same calling that you was that you came in that you was called to be a servant of the most high through Christ continuing that right? where is he going Let's let's read verse twenty one. Uh, thou call being a servant, care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. So this this exhortation here, what was Paul? Who was Paul speaking to when he said there would be some amongst Israel that would be called to be a follower, a worshiper of Most High through Christ, but he's being he's coming in as a servant. What, what is that referring to? And Christ is saying, care not for it, meaning, okay, don't despise being a servant, right? That, that's your present situation, your, pre your present role, right? Continue in that calling, right? Being a servant, right? So what type of servant, like, is Christ referring to here? There's being somewhat like a... Uh, that present a person's situation, right? In reading that, y'all know what servant, like what type of servant Paul was speaking to? No, but he he's already in that state. So this is someone. He's been called to serve the Most High in Christ, but he's already a servant. What, what, what's a, 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 a role of a servant? What does a servant do? Right? You, you, you go in there. There you go, right? So, uh, 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 a, maid, a maid servant, like the scripture says, a bond man, bond woman, right? A maid servant. So you may have had those that that you know they're in a situation where financially they had to hire themselves out as a servant, right? So a servant has a who's over the servant, so we can understand. 
if the title of the person that's serving is a servant, right, is he has a master, right? There's a there's a head of a household that he serves under, right? And so now this servant here is is, you know, a brother or a sister in Israel, and then now he's being taught the gospel. The gospel of Christ is being taught unto him, and then but he's realized, okay, but I still gotta. You know, my duties as a servant, you know, I got to go to this man's household to clean, cook, whatever it is, responsibilities that he has. You know, whether he, he's owed a debt that he has to work off or that's that's the that's a, a, a way for this person to to earn money, to provide for their household. Right. They have to hire themselves out as a servant. Paul in the spirit is saying, don't care for it. Don't despise it. Continue in that role. But understand that what you being called to serve the most high through Christ. Right. So, but he said, but if thou mayest be made free, see, use it rather, right? So if there's a position where you could buy yourself out of that position, that situation, well, don't follow that route, right? Try to get yourself free from that servitude that you're under, right? Verse 22, for he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man, see? What's, what position was Israel in? during the time that they were in Egypt, before they were delivered out of Egypt. Sure. They were servants unto Pharaoh and the Egyptians, right? And remember, and Mosai raised up Moses and told Moses, deliver this message to Pharaoh. Let my people go that they may serve me, right? Israel wasn't created to serve other people, other men, even amongst ourselves. You're not trying to, if a brother has to hire themselves out and, and as a servant in your house, you're not supposed to oppress him to the point where he could never get himself out of that situation, right? We wasn't, we wasn't, the scriptures mention how we, over your own people, you wasn't to rule over that person with rigor, right? Like they're a non-Israelite nation. Like you oppressing them to the point where they're like lower than you. They're less than you. No, that's your brother, right? The same way you wouldn't want to be in that position where you got to hire yourself out as a, as a bond man or a bond woman. You shouldn't desire to oppress your people and to try to keep him in that state, right? Because we have called to be what? Servants of the Most High through Christ, right? And so let's read on. Likewise, also, so this is the last part of verse 22. Likewise, also he that is called being free, see that, is Christ's servant. See what the scripture is telling us here? See, so people look at serving Christ it's kind of like slavery. No. <laughs> We've been called to be made free because think about it. When you have a, you, a, a man, right, married to a woman and they have children, right, and, in the, and then they, the parents is assigning chores to the children, can, can the children look at it as, like, I'm in captivity, this is slavery? Oh, I got to clean my room or I got to take out the trash. I got to mow the lawn. You know, the, the, the wife is teaching the, the young daughters how to sew, cook, clean, you know, like maintain the house. Oh, I, I hate this. This is slavery. This is the worst. Wait a minute. Whatever your parents has, that's yours. Right? The inheritance, your, your parents pass away. Who's going to inherit all that? <laughs> Think about that. You are. <clears throat> but children... And, and in the meantime, while the parents are still alive, who's, who's providing everything for you? Who's taking care of you? Who's putting clothes on your back? Who's feeding you? Who's looking out for your welfare, your benefit, and teaching you the scriptures and commandments? So how, how are you calling that slavery? Well, as adults, let's look how the Most High is raising us as, as, as children, right? As his sons and his daughters. And Most High says, whatever I've created on this earth is for you. All you got to do is what? Be obedient. Be faithful. Serve me. Yeah, but we want the world, but we don't want it to obtain it how the Most High is telling us to obtain it. The earth is the Most High. It belongs to the Most High. So how are we going to neglect the Most High, despise the Most High, but we want good health, we want life, we want blessings, we want blessings in our marriages, in raising our children, between brethren, but we're going to do it some other way. we got some other ideas. See, whereas here, we serve in Christ. 
we being what made free free from what the bondage of sins and the troubles and the temptations and the trials and then the, the persecutions in that sense that goes that comes along with it right because we are going to go through temptations we are going to go through chastenings right but to build us up right and to, to cleanse us to purge us from that works right that's what's, that's why when you read it i want to see i can remember exactly in, in Ezra, where it mentions about how those that's going to follow the most high they're going to go through the hard times, right? And I'm not quoting it verbatim, Lord willing, we might get to it, right? And then it, it also mentions that those that are in the world, they're going to go through those same hardships. But the difference is those that forsake all and then endure the temptations through Christ, there's a blessing. But those that go through those temptations, the, the persecutions of men, right? But they're doing it in a worldly way. What is the, what is that hope? What is the blessing to come? <laughs> Destruction. See that? So we'd rather wouldn't you rather suffer for Christ for to be a servant of Christ, and in the end receive the blessing, eternal life, as opposed to going through the hardships, going through problems, trying to s solve it your way or the world's way, and then get nowhere, and then at Christ's coming you get the fire. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't. But people that's in the world that, that's void of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures that choose to remain in their ignorance, that's the path that they take. Right? And so, verse 23, you are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Right? But at the same time, the scriptures tell you, Paul having that understanding because we are under the bondage of sin. We are under the curse that the Most High kept his word that said that what we was going to serve the nations for the one of all things, right? But now if you are in a position, though, where you could be in a way where, are we truly going to be free in this world when you really think about it as far as, like, free to come and go and do as we please? No. As long as the heathen are ruling, beginning with the so-called white man, we're not going to be free from that servitude as far as the bondage of sin that we're in until Christ comes back and delivers us from that, right? And make his enemies his footstool. But at the end of the day, there is a little reprieve that the Most High gives us in which, you know, for, for the most part, we're able to go home, right? We're able to, to, to have some type of order in your house where someone's not telling you, well, turn the lights off, do this, do that. Wake up at this time, we want you over here. Because the scripture is telling us we bought with a price. What price was that? Was it 50 shekels of, of gold, silver, that all of us was bought with that price to be to be part of this church here? What is the price referring to? Paul in the Spurs speaking about it. And then he said, you, you bought with a price, be not either servants of men. What was the cost for all of us to be to be in this fellowship? What's the price? How much? What was it worth? What's the value? I mean, all y'all should know it. It's another answer. You guessing or you saying it like with confidence? With confidence, right? So that price was Christ spilling his blood on the cross for us, right? And Peter, first Peter goes into that, right? Where he speaks about how we wasn't bought. Well, let's let's hold it, right? You know what? We'll get that next. Well, I just don't want to go astray too much. So we have enough time to kind of go through the lesson here. But the price was Christ spilling his blood on the cross for us, right? Which means that the Most High was no longer accepting the blood of bulls and goats, right? As a way uh, of atonement for our sins, right? That was, that was a temporary escape the Most High gave us when he gave us animal sacrifice for atonement of sin. But ultimately, the Most High always knew that it was going to take the blood of Christ, right? Christ being without sin, right? Christ being that, that lamb without blemish that was going to purge away the sins of the world, meaning the sins of Israel. And then now we may be able to be accepted by the Most High again as true sons and daughters, right? But only to those that repent. Because many of Israel... They're going to want to remain in their sins. They're going to look at the blood of Christ as 
an unworthy thing. Like they could care less that Christ died on the cross for them. And they're going to show it in their actions, their behavior, their speech, that they despise Christ. Right? Whereas the true believers, they're going to cherish it. They're going to look at it as a great thing in which the Most High didn't have to have Christ down on the cross. He could have just started over, just as we was reading last week, when Israel was going off in the wilderness. And then Most High was telling Moses, I'm going to wipe them out and then make a new nation out of you, Moses. Right? And then Moses made supplications. He prayed for Israel and Aaron that the Most High may have had mercy. Well, who was the greatest intercessor for us? Above Moses. Christ. Right? So let's continue. 1 Corinthians 7. So we're at verse... Twenty-four. 1 Corinthians 7, 24. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. See? Now, concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. So what Paul is saying here? When he's saying... When it comes to virgins, right, an unmarried man or an unmarried woman, he said in regards to those that are unmarried, right, they've never dealt as far as in, in, in laying down with another person, like as far as a man laying down with another woman, right, for the purpose of marriage, or a woman laying down with a man for the purpose of marriage in Christ, right? This is... This is, he says, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. So what, what is Paul saying here? He's, he's making it known. He said, I don't have a commandment from the Lord. But what I'm about to tell you here, right, when he says, yet I give my judgment, right, what is that going into? If he said, I'm giving you my judgment. He's speaking of the wisdom that comes from the Father. Right. Right. So, oh, well, what, what's the commandment? Paul, where's that written? What you're about to tell us here. Is that Genesis, or Leviticus, Deuteron which commandment? No, he said, this wisdom that I'm about to, to, to expound, right, is coming from who? One that have obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful, right? Remember, Christ handpicked Paul when he was on his way to Damascus to, to, to oppress the church, Right? And Christ told them, you're kicking against the, the pricks. Right? The brothers and sisters that that's following me, all you're doing is damage to yourself, Paul. <laughs> we can do nothing for the, against the truth but for the truth. And Paul repented. Right? He got baptized, and then he, he became a mighty prophet. So everything that he's speaking here, all his writings, all the letters that he was writing to the churches, that was what? Based off the Holy Spirit speaking through him. Likewise with this message here that he's, that he's expounding unto the church. So verse 26. I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. So what was he referring to? To, to continue. Remember his, his message was whatever state, whatever situation you was being called, continue in that. And in the previous verses, you, he mentions that there was some that was coming out of the circumcision. Right, and then there was some that was coming out of uncircumcision, and then he said, "Circumcision is nothing." Right? Is he saying those that were born and raised in the law, like, don't continue in the law? No, because no, the circumcision is their their claim to fame, so to speak, or their righteousness was based on the fact that they thought that salvation was through the letter of the law, through the works, right? And then you had the other side of Israel that departed from the commandments of the Most High, that became like the heathen, which had no knowledge of the commandments of the Most High. They needed to be saved. They needed to be taught the gospel. They needed to repent. So both groups needed what? Christ. And in that group we mentioned there was some that was called being servants. Right? So they, they had to report to somebody that was their master. No, they had to understand my true master is who? Christ. 
Although for this present situation here, I have to hire myself out. You know, that's the way I'm going to make money, provide for my, for my house. Yeah, I call this guy my Lord. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, master. With the understanding, our true master, our true Lord is who? Christ. Right? So I'm not giving all thoughts to this guy here and, and bowing down to him hand and foot like he's my God. He's my head. Right? So same way. Paul is stressing that for those that's, that's being called into the faith, right? They're unmarried. They're virgins, right? Un unmarried man or unmarried woman, right? He said, I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress, I say that it is good for a man so to be. So is Paul, in a way, saying that one should never get married? Like, you know, parents, they're having children. And then, oh, yeah, the commandment, 1 Corinthians 7 says, remain a virgin. Like he's telling his son, got to remain a virgin. He's telling his daughter, remain a virgin, based on the scripture here. Is, is that what Paul is, is was that uh, the focus of his message? Why did he say that it is good for a man so to be? Well, let's read on before anybody answers, because he's going to expound on it. Right? And mind you, Paul said that he's speaking in verse 25 as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. So Paul is not making his own assumptions. He's not coming up with his own thoughts. Because remember, Paul himself, he was unmarried. Right? So Paul is not saying because of my situation, every man needs to be single, remain unmarried. And the same thing for the sisters, because I can deal with it. You know, I'm abiding in this call and being, you know, unmarried. So that should apply for the whole church. No, there's a reason why he's saying that it is good to remain unmarried. Right. But he's not saying that as a commandment that you must remain unmarried. Right. So that's what that's what Paul is kind of going into here. So let's read 27. Are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. So what is that saying? And mind you, this is going into, as far as, but if you read in this in the context of this chapter, right? They coming in married, right? Some will be coming in being a virgin, being called into the body of Christ, being called to be a servant of Christ, coming in as a virgin, right? Never dealt in sexual relationship, you know, as far as a man with a woman or a woman with, an, with a man. And then in certain cases, when the gospel is being preached unto a brother or unto a sister, they're already in a relationship, right? They're already married. So now in, in hearing the gospel, oh, you know what? I don't want to teach my wife this. Or maybe my wife is being rebellious. She, don't want, she doesn't want to hear the scriptures. Or in the case of the husband, right? He might not see it right away. Well, Paul is saying, well, don't make your first decision to be what? To be separate, to be divorced, to cut off the relationship, right? He's saying seek not to be loose, right? So Paul is, he's not promoting in a way where like divorce, so we could, so we can understand. Because in certain cases, yeah, brother, you know, I, I'm hearing, I'm seeing the scriptures, I want to get baptized, but... You know, the woman that I'm with, you know, I love her. We've been together for a while. You know, they have children together, but she's not seen it yet. Right? She, she's not, she doesn't see the scriptures at all. Or maybe her interpretation or her understanding of the scriptures is based on some religion, right? That they were thinking that that, that was the way to follow the Most High in Christ. And then now the truth is being revealed to them. But at this time, they're not really seeing it fully yet. Well, Paul is saying, well, don't try to, you know, like lose hope in that relationship and try to cut it off. Right. He says, seek not to be loose. So the latter part of verse 27 says, are thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. So what does that mean? Now we're talking, we was talking about coming someone who was a virgin that never laid down with another you know, a sister that never laid down with a man or a man that never laid down with a woman. And this is their calling. Paul is saying that, you know, in the spirit, 
you know, there's benefits in, in remaining that way, right? Remaining and not trying to seek to be married. But then in the case where there's couples that came together, right? Maybe not both of them are seeing the scriptures, you know, in, in the spirit of Christ yet. Well, don't seek to be loose yet. There's hope that that person, that other person may turn around. Most high through Christ may turn that person around, right? And bring him in the sheepfold. Now, the, the next part says, Are thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. So in what context could this person be called into the faith? Coming in as. Mind you, they're not a virgin because they've already, you know what I'm saying, their virginity's already been taken when they lay down with that person. But let's say this guy's coming in, maybe he had children already in the world. He had, you know, with one woman, multiple women, whatever the situation was, living a life of, you know, sin, worldliness, which in many cases... That applies to a lot of us in this faith, right? That may not have been born in this truth, right? And you may have had past relationships. Now you're being called, you're single presently. What is Paul, what is his advice in the spirit? Well, get yourself right. Now is the time to focus on who? The Most High in Christ. Now it's time to learn the scriptures that, that way later on, if you be the Most High's will, you could be, probably be in a position to be what to be a husband or to be a wife to be a father to be a mother right first learning of christ don't complicate the matter that's what paul is going into as we're going to read in the scriptures he's going to expound on it he's saying seek not a wife now is not the time first day you learn the scriptures i believe i repent i want to get baptized and then you've seen brothers and sisters with their wives with their children and oh man i i want that i want that for myself yeah it's a good thing to desire a wife, but wait on the Lord. Go about it patiently. Don't be hasty. Right? So verse 28. But, and if thou marry. See? Now in Paul saying that, there's, there's, there's things that's taking place to lead to that. Right? Because we, we just read that, but and if thou marry. Now, we, we, we don't go into the whole process as far as, okay, how does a, a man obtain a wife? Or how does a wife obtain a, 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 a husband? There's, that's, there's multiple topics or lessons that we could go into as far as, you know, to, to, to prepare ourselves to where we're in a position where we desire a wife, right? A man's desiring a wife or a, wife, a woman is desiring a husband. There's ways spiritually go about it, right? Because we read this, but if thou marry, that you one week in the faith, two weeks in the faith, a month into the faith, right? And in saying those timelines, I'm not saying, well, there's no way a man could have a wife if he's only been in the faith a month or five months. So that's up to the most high, right? A brother said, you know, you got to wait a year, you got to wait five years, you got to wait 10 years. Most high is a matchmaker, right? You read about Tobias, right? When 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 Tobit sent him to get the money that was owed unto him, right? Now it doesn't. I know in the scripture it doesn't go into exactly how long, as far as you know. But it was ultimately when you read that whole story in the book of Tobit, who was the matchmaker to bring Tobias and Sarah together as husband and wife? The most high. And now was that something that, that Tobias was seeking? Did he have in his mind, you know, as I go to Raguel and, and, and to pick up this money, that I'm going to come back with a wife? That was far from his mind. See that? The, 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 the guy that he was with, as far as, you know, he didn't even know initially that that was an a, a, a angel sent by the most high. See? Most high was behind that whole thing. Right? And then now, not only is he coming back, with the money that was owed to him, to his father, Tobit, he's coming back with a wife. Like, wait a minute. But as you read that whole story there in the book Tobit in the Apocrypha, how did, how did Tobias go about, you know, establishing, you know, this marriage? Like, what, what was the, his, um, where was his mind at? And in seeing the sister say, oh, man, shit, that's a beautiful sister, man. 
I wonder, you know, I'm going to make her my wife. And then, boom, I'm going to lay down with her. She's my wife now. Be good. You know, and then she's ready-made. She, she's a virtuous sister, and she's going to do the right thing. She's going to treat me well. And did, 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 did Tobias take it for granted that way? Did he move in that fashion in, 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 in establishing this relationship with the sister? And then now saying that you my wife? Yeah, we lay down. Yeah, you my wife now. Is that what's making it the marriage? When you really think about it as far as you laying down with the woman? Because that there's there's doctrine that, that's based on that. You taking this woman's virginity, or let's say the woman wasn't a virgin, she'd already had previous relationships. But then you start dealing with her and you telling her, you know, about the most high in Christ, we Israel, this, that, the other, and then Guess what? Once I lay down with you, you my wife. And then now put the sister in a way where her back's against the wall. Now it's scripture, scripture, scripture. But it, there was not, not, there wasn't a preparation, right? There wasn't a building process to make sure that there was an understanding from your part, the man's part, or, and this woman's part as far as this, this situation, as far or this relationship that we're about to embark together on, right? How was how was Tobit's, Tobias's marriage established to the sister Sarah according to the scriptures? What was the foundation of that marriage? And that's just before you answer that, Theo. One, one second, and that's just to give some understanding on what we was reading in ver verse twenty-eight, First Corinthians seven twenty-eight, where it says, "But and if thou marry, because." You read this, but we have to understand, okay, okay, Paul is promoting marriage, right? He's saying, yeah, it's, it's good to, to remain in a state where whether you was a virgin, you've never dealt in sexual relationships, right? Or you came in, in the body, in the faith, in the gospel, where now you wasn't, you may have had a previous relationship, but now it's over. Y'all broken up, y'all went separate ways. Now as you start learning the scriptures, Okay, make your focus Christ. Don't be like, don't try to seek to be married. Right? But there might come a time where, you know, most of our brains a, a, a woman in this man's life where, okay, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, be the most high's will, this could be my wife. I don't know it yet, maybe not. Right? And the same thing for a sister. Right? However way the most high is going to bring them together. It could be a brother and sister that's already in the body of Christ. Right? And by the body of Christ, we know Christ's church is throughout the whole world, right? It's not brother here, you got to marry a sister here in Jacksonville or if you're all in Boston. No, oh, it could be someone at your job, right? That, okay, you know, asking questions and they're starting to know who you are and what you're about. And, you know, now you're starting to, you know, develop a liking, right? Where it's kind of like, okay, now... Does it mean now just move quickly? I like her. She likes me. We have things in common. Boom. You know, we like the same movies. We like the same music. You know, and, and you know, I've been teaching her a few scriptures. And, yeah, she's already, you know, throwing out her all her pants. She's buying dresses. You know, she's buying head coverings. Yeah, brother. She knows she's Israel, too. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Does that, all that, she could be doing all that. The same thing with a brother, right? For a sister that's in the faith that meets a brother out there, right? He could be doing all, what does the scripture say about favor? <laughs> when you, in, for, in Proverbs 31, that, that's, that's a good scripture to make reference to. It's deceitful, right? It says beauty is vain and favor is deceitful. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised, right? So it's, it's like what? The same thing applies to a brother. Somebody could be, you know, coming in a way where it's faint, it's pretending, right? But their whole goal is what? They're coming in lust, right? But so the trick to obtain it, to lay down with this sister here, you know, I got to appear as, you know, I'm a believer. Oh, yeah, we Israel, boom, boom. I come to a couple of classes here and there. Scriptures tell us what? We have to try the spirit by the spirit. And that takes what? If you if if 
if you're trying to prove somebody, what does that what does that entail? Can you prove a brother or sister in in in, in one class, two classes, a couple weeks? That takes what? Time, right? Patience, prayer. And then asking, truly asking the most high, wait, you know, let's let's get it. Let's go to Tobit. And we'll read that just so we can understand as far as the, the mindset that to, Tobias had, you know, when you know it was presented to him, when it was when it was, I should say, um, well let's read it. I just I let the scripture speak for us. Let's read Tobit, uh, Tobit in the Apocrypha, and then whole First Corinthians seven. We'll come back to that. Tobit, the eighth chapter. So we'll just read a few verses here. We're not going to go through the whole. As far as, you know, from beginning to end with the whole process as far as how they got together, right? Because that's a whole class in itself. But just wanted to get the point as far as the the, the basis, as far as the, the foundation for his marriage, right? Which that should be the foundation for all our marriage. All the brothers and sisters here, whether married or unmarried, this, is, this should be what goes on in our minds daily, right? We're still working on it daily. So to Uvid 8, let's read it from 4. Then, of course, we're not, we're not, you know, for sake of time, we didn't cover as far as the parents being involved, right? There's a whole process to that. There's nothing that's being done sneakily where the woman's sneaking behind her father's back and then getting together with a brother, Right. So this whole thing is, is is being done in a way where it's it's promoting the spirit of the most high in Christ. Right. Even in a marriage. Right. The parents are fully aware as far as what's going on. Right. And in this case here, it was Sarah's parents, right? Because Tobit is he, he traveled to another city. Right. And so this is that's why every it's a case by case type of situation, right? Where as long as it's the Holy Spirit is the driving force behind the decisions, we can't lose, right? So in this case here, when you read the whole thing from Tobit, the first chapter, as far as the whole, um, um, everything that transpired to that led Tobias to where now he's becoming to, to a point where he's able to take this sister as his wife, we read where it wasn't followed through by, by lust, and we're going to read it here. So Tobit 8 and 4. And after that, they were both shut in together. Right? So shut in, in together in the marriage chamber. Right? So it says, Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise, let us pray that God would have pity on us. So how do you look and, 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 and see Sarah as and, and acknowledge Sarah as? A sister, right? A, a sister that was doing the will of the Most High in Christ. That was like-minded with him, right? As opposed to, you know, a, a, a brother looking at some woman in the world and then all this foolish, you know, names and titles and the B word and all this, you know, that's how they see each other, right? And then the, 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 the brother to in the eyes of the sister, so I'm talking about in reference to how the world to see each other and talk with one another with disrespect, right? Or in a way where there's, there's, no, um, there's no honor behind it. Well, this N word here, this B word here, and, you know, we, we, just, we just together, we just seeing each other. It's like they, there, there's no, um, what's the word that I, um, I want to describe it as? There's no, um, well, it'll, it'll come to me. Like, there's no importance in a the marriage. There's, they're not even looking at it as a marriage, so we can understand, right? So there, there's no emphasis on what we're about to do here, like the scriptures tell us in Hebrews 13 in regards to the bed, right? It tells you marriage is honorable in all things, right? So already getting into the bed, you're supposed to see it, okay, 
we engage in, in, in an act where a husband and wife is to be supposed to be doing, right? And that's what makes the what the bed on the file. But that's not being taught to the to the young men, the young women from from youth from birth. If anything, you know, you young, you know, don't just settle yet. You know, play the field, and then when you get you know you get to a point where the right person comes along, you know it. Wait a minute, you've already been defiled. That's why Paul was stressing in First Corinthians seven that. If you're a virgin, you come in as a virgin, well, for the time being, remain in that state. But later on, if thou marry, right, and, there's, and that's the part in that same chapter where he was mentioning marry in the Lord, right? So there's there's a marriage that's in the Lord and there's other marriages, that's what, that's promoting what? Fornication, whoredom, right? That's the marriages that comes with problems, right? By problems meaning all marriages have problems, but problems that can be resolved, problems that 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 leads to to violence, problems that that leads to, you know, baby mamas, baby daddies, right? Problems that have like long term effects on the relationship and on the children that comes out of that relationship, right? Which when you look back at it, okay, how was you know what what was this from the beginning? Was it marriage or was it lust? And you really examine like how how coming together. You know, was it based on the Most High in Christ being the head of that marriage? Or was it my lust or your lust? Right? So let's read on in, in Tobit the 8th chapter. It says, and after that, so we have verse 4. After that, they were both shut in together. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise and let us pray that God would have pity on us. So this prayer is not after the fact. It's not, oh, man, like, we lay down together. You know you're my wife now, right? I'm your husband. You know what? Let's let's pray the Most High in Christ bless this union here. You know, let's get into the scriptures. Yeah, he's sisters, you know, this, you're my wife now. You know, man, he takes... And the, the scriptures that they're trying to promote and saying that that's marriage is not even what that scripture is saying. No, you, you fornicated. And then now you're trying to make it marriage... When you would have had a better chance had you established and prayed to the Most High in Christ to have his spirit on you and the sister here, right? To where this coming together, to this union will be blessed, right? And that's what Tobias here in the spirit as he was taught by his father, right? To deal right, to, to be upright, to walk in the spirit of the Most High in, every, in all his decisions. Remember, even when you read in the previous chapters that... Tobit, Tobias' father, was instructing him as far as to deal right, right, to be an example. Because easily Tobias could have been like, hey, my pops is not around, my mother's not around, I'm going to cut up, right? I'm going to hang out with, with foolish guys and then run the streets, mess around with harlots, and then I'll come back, and then my father will never know. Who would know? The most high. See that? So Tobias always that had that, that wisdom in his mind that from his... From the time that he was born, right, his, his father and his mother raised him to, to be a true worshiper of the Most High, right? So, continuing on in verse 4. So, the prayer is that, that the Most High would have pity on us. So, if, if the Most High don't have pity on the marriage, what are we going to be given over to? To our own will, to our own mind. And we're going to lean upon our own understanding, how, how this marriage should be ran. I'm the man in this house and what I say goes and this is how it's going to be and I'm putting my foot down. Now you you being a lion in your house. Now you twisting 1 Corinthians 11 where it says the man being the head of the house, right? He's the head over the wife. But in what context? Void of Christ or, or the man himself has a head? So. Yeah, because we could be quoting scriptures left and right. See, woman, see that you reverence me. Woman... Make sure that, you know, you're obedient. You know, and then, okay, well, the man looking in the mirror, are, are, we, are we reverencing Christ? Are we being obedient to Christ? The commandments in, in, in word and an example that, that we're trying to promote in the house, is it of yourself or is it of Christ? See that? Because what was Adam's excuse, you know, the minute that 
Eve went off and then he followed suit. And then after the wick, followed after the wickedness of Satan. Prior to that, was there problems? Was there, was, everything was nice, fun, good, joy. Man, this woman, she's a help me unto me, all praises, right? But once Satan get in there, how, how did, how did Adam, you know, as far as, how did he react towards his wife Eve? Did he look at her with, with joy and then, you know, and appreciate her? How do how do we know that initially he despised Eve after they both sinned? Exactly, brother answered correctly, right? For for both of them going off, Adam threw a whole blame on Eve. It, it's the woman God that you gave me. She's the one that got me out of order here. Right? Could could a man use that as an excuse? Brother, like, why is your house out of order? Like, like, why does the report is coming back that, you know, your wife is saying things, doing things she shouldn't be doing, the same thing with the children? Like, now, are there cases where the man is justified in saying that the sister's going on or, or the, the, the children are going on? Yes. But now, if you have a part in it, could you just throw the whole blame on them? Well, see, my, you know, the kids are rebellious. They're hard-headed, you know, especially for this one here. I tell him this, he don't do that. And then he got me so angry, you know, that I, I, I wasn't thinking. And then, you know, I, I, I got violent. Or, you know, my wife pushed my button so much that, you know, brother, what would you do if you was in my situation? And your wife kept doing this and this. Like, so you can understand, you know, why I, I hit her. You know, I kicked or I, I, I got violent with him. Can, can, it may happen, but can, can we say that that's, we justified in doing it? No. And, and, and what we have to look at is, okay, these are the symptoms of what's happening here. Like we're looking at presently the, the situation here, but what led up to it was the marriage not only started out with Christ, because we, you know, we could, especially for the brothers and sisters that's presently married, you know, we could say, yeah, when I did go about this marriage patiently, I wasn't hasty, you know, you know, I prayed on it, I fasted, and then you know, before we got together, we prayed. But what what was the word that we read in Mark ten in regards to in the marriage, in the the wife, the husband, the children, the houses, and the lands that the Most High would give us? What would that come with? Temptations, right? Persecution. Persecution, specifically. That was the word that was used there, Christ used. Right? So what came in, in, in Adam's marriage later on? The persecution, right? Temptations. But did Adam have an excuse? Who, who was it that knew the commandment? When, when Satan came to Eve and then said, had, the, had God said that, you know, if, if you deal with this, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to surely die. Who did the Most High say that to first, first as far as um, directly, firsthand? Who was that? Who, who, who was that commandment first to deliver to amongst between Adam and Eve? Did the Most High speak to both of them together? What, what did the Scripture say in, in Genesis two? And unto who did the Most High say? Yeah. Unto the man. So where did where did Eve get that instruction from? For Satan to know that it was already taught to her. So by the time we get to Genesis 3, and then Satan coming at Eve first, and then questioning her and saying, Did the most high say you truly gonna die if you deal with me? The commandment was first given to who? Adam. Adam taught, taught it unto his wife. Right? So now later on, the wife goes off, process of time, she goes off after Satan. She presented in the house to Adam. Who should, who should abide in the commandment that was taught unto him? Now, we understand the scriptures tell us, right, the, the woman, she's a, she's a tower against death, right? She's a help me, right? She's, um, we no longer twain, like Christ said in Matthew 19, right? But one flesh, right? So understand, like, when Christ is saying that, you one flesh, right? You're no longer twain. You're no longer two separate 
or two separate lives, right? You won. Where's the order in that one? Does that one that means it's a democracy, it's 50 50, and we'll flip a coin on it? Like, okay, you bring out your opinion, I bring out mine, and then we'll try to come in the middle, you know? Like, ultimately, who, who, who makes a decision in the house? Right, we know after the Most High Christ, but after that, beyond that point. The man, right? So he's coming and saying, hey, you know, the devil revealed this wisdom unto me, this, that, the other. You know, and, and, and we could be gods. We could be, you know, now we could judge our own good and evil. And this feels good. That sounds good. Man, what do you think, Adam? You know, look, look at the pleasures that's opened up unto us. That, man, following the Most High, we didn't know about this side of life. But a life that's what? Wickedness, right? Deceitful lust. Satan initially didn't present it to Eve, to Eve like that. It wasn't until later that when the Most High checked Adam and Eve on it, that's when they realized they messed up, right? But Adam knew the commandment. Adam was the one that was, that was supposed to get his wife in order with the Most High. Like, where is this wisdom coming from? Now, it didn't go that way. Let's say Adam did that, and then the wife was rebellious. Like, Adam... I've, I've tasted the world. I'm not going back. You could stay and follow God in Christ if you want. Now Adam could have went to the Most High in Christ and said, hey, this woman here, I don't know where she's getting this wickedness from, but that's not something I've been teaching her. That's not something that, that I tolerate in this house. She knows the commandments, but she's choosing to do something else. And now Adam has cause, right, to speak unto the Most High and to Christ and saying, this woman here, Right, and most high would deal with the woman, but did it go down that way? So, who was this is guilty in the sin that, that Eve partaked in? Adam, right? So, he, he wasn't justified in saying this woman here because who was the head of the woman? Satan is Satan the head of our wives? No, the man is, and who's the head of the man? The Israelite man, according to the scriptures, according to first Corinthians 11. Christ, right? So once that order gets broken, you read in the scriptures, I want to say in, in Wisdom of Solomon, either 13 or 14 chapter, it speaks about disorders in marriages, right? What's, what's the root of disorders in marriages? What's the foundation of the disorders in marriages? Idolatry. Idolatry. See that? And did, Tob did Tob Tobias has that wisdom? To know that if this marriage, the foundation is not the most high in Christ, then we've already messed up. Right? He, he understood that. That's why before they laid down and, and, and consummated the marriage, he said, let's get up and pray. Right? Let's acknowledge that like the scripture says, in all our ways acknowledge the most high. Well, in our marriages too. Right? So let's, let's, read, let's read on. Verse 5. Tobit 8 and 5. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. See, so what is he doing here? Giving all praises to the Most High, right? Most High in Christ. Because we know that the Most High is above all. We can't do nothing without the Most High in Christ. We can't wake up and, and go about our day without the Most High, you know, acknowledging that way. He's going to be the one that to bless us, right, with all things, right? So he's magnifying, he's glorifying the Most High in spirit. It says, let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Thou madest Adam and gave us some Eve, his wife, for an helper and a state. See so what is, what is he acknowledging as far as, you know, the purpose of marriage, the purpose of a man and a woman coming together? Based off that first marriage that the Most High established in the beginning, right? Where the Most High said in, in regards to Adam, it's not good for a man to be alone, right? Let me bless him with a wife, right? To be what? The scripture says, a helper and a state. Right? So, so do we acknowledge our wives like that? Do all of us, as far as husbands? Or sometimes do we take take it for granted as far as you know 
the, the union, the relationship. Uh, you got to look at it, wait a minute, from the beginning, Most High made it where, okay, it's not good for a man to be alone. So your wife is what? She's a helper and a stay. Right? So if someone's helping you, are they working against you? Are they challenging you? Uh, are they giving you grief? Or, 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 or are they... Are they... Um, directing as far as how things are going to go. Think about it. <laughs> like you helping me. Right now, if, if someone helping you, they could give you advice. They could tell you, hey, maybe you might want to do it this way. And it's like I tell Theo, hey, I'm building this um, this cabinet for my house. I'm going to need help. You might come in over and help me with it. Right? Now, I already know what I'm going to do, but I just need some help because I got to support it. Boom, boom, boom. Now, you come in there, like, brother, like, I wouldn't, man, that's an ugly cabinet, this, like, how you helping me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 you're not helping me right now. Like, you grieving my spirit. Like, man, like, get out of here, man. Like, all right, brother. I see where you're coming from. I'm good. I'll call another brother that could help me. Right? But, and I'm saying it in a facetious way, but think about this. When you're reading, like, like the meaning of words, right? Like, you're reading the scriptures, you got to think about it. You just, oh, she's a helper in the state. Okay, what do you, like, you helping me right now. We doing it together, but you you are help unto me, right? And so, if someone's helping you, can you do it without that person? If you need the help, and I'm not talking about things that you're gonna make do it the difficult way, right? So I'll do it. I'll figure out a way. To, we talking about the purpose of marriage. Most times, the one that's the that that created marriage. You could have said, Adam, you could do everything by yourself. We don't need a wife. But most I made it where a man and a woman, they need each other. They complement each other. They're, they're perfected together in that union, right? I don't need you arguing with your wife or something. I'll do it by myself. I'll do it by myself. Wait a minute. There could have been a case where you were single. You're not single. There could have been a case where you were, you were a virgin. You came in as you stayed that way. But you came together, as we were reading in 1 Corinthians 7 chapter, or at some point maybe you didn't come together already together as far as husband and wife or in a relationship. At some point in the faith, Most High brought you together with this person, right? A man with a wife or a woman with a husband. Now Paul said in the spirit, don't seek to be loose. So how can we seek to be loose? Well, we give place to the devil, right? We have good days and then... We read in the scripture, right, in Luke, right, it mentioned the same story in, in Matthew 4. You read it in Luke 4. It mentioned after Christ was tempted, right, for those 40 days in the wilderness by the devil directly himself. The scripture says Satan left for what? For good? Or for how long did Satan leave for? When the Most High said the angels to minister unto Christ. It said, there's a word that it mentions in regard to Satan departing. When Christ cut him, Christ stayed in the commandments of the Most High. They mentioned that what Satan left for a season, right? So tomorrow, Christ, you 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 talking that Most High talk, you quoting scriptures, and then you wouldn't bow down to me today. Well, I'm coming back. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be next week, but be on guard, right? And was Satan on guard? Yes. I mean, was Christ on guard for Satan, knowing no know, knowing how Satan moves, how trickery it is, how wily it is? Yeah. So what about us? Five years into the marriage, ten years into the marriage, everything is good. Okay, now what about Satan now coming and the temptation through you, through the man, right? And then the wife now she has to understand what my role is. That what I'm gonna be subject unto my husband, right? I'm gonna honor my husband. I'm gonna respect my husband. I'm gonna reverence my husband, right? But at the same time, I'm gonna stay in the scriptures, the same commandments that my husband taught me. That you learn of Christ, I'm going to abide in it. Right? I'm not going to be disrespectful. I'm not going to be in a way where to grieve him, give him a hard time. Or let's say we all have faults, right? Because we're not perfect. Right? We, we in the process of being made perfect in Christ. So there's things that we all lack, husbands and wives, brothers, sisters, right? So we have shortcomings. Should we use that against one another when we're having difficult times? 
oh, you always do this, and then you that type of person. Oh, well, what if Most High pulls out our card on us? Right? When, when Peter asks Christ how many times should he forgive his brother, his neighbor, he, said, he asked Christ seven times. What did Christ say? Yeah, give him seven. Seven is a good number. No, Christ has said unto you 70 times seven. Right? Meaning go the extra mile. Right? We, we're not putting limitations on one another. Well, that starts where? We could apply that towards brothers. We could apply that towards sisters, right? Let's say, you know, you have to be patient with a brother. Yeah, I understand the sister, you know, she's going through some, some things at home or whatever, you know. She didn't mean it, you know, like, like it tells us in Ecclesiastes 19. She slipped with the tongue. You know, she, it's, it's her speech, she came off because pressures of life, whatever, things she's done with, but it's not from the heart. Now, what about when it happens in your house? Right? I'm dealing with Theo, and then let's say I get out of the spirit with Theo. Right? And then, man, lawyer's not usually like that. You know, let me talk to the brother and then see what's going on. You know, and then just explain to him his fault. And then, Lord willing, I pray he sees himself. You know, but then your wife, damn, like, what? Who are you, just, who are you, who are you talking to like that? Now you're getting out of order. Right? Whereas with another brother or another sister or someone else, we could have been more patient. You know, you could have applied more understanding. You could have been a little bit more merciful, right? So then there's times we may hold our wives to a higher standard, right? And then now do, do we want the most high to, through Christ to hold us to that same standard? Right? That's, that, that's a good scripture that goes with that is Matthew 7, right? Judge not that ye be not judged, right? We see, we see the little motes in our wives' eyes, right, issue. Not to say that. Our wives don't have issues. All our wives have issues. All the husbands have issues. All the children have issues. Right? That's why we, we need Christ. Christ is the physician. Right? None of, none of us is on some pedestal. Oh, see, our marriages need to be patterned like this brother and his wife. Look how they, you know, they hold hands and they hug each other and they're smiling. Are you in that brother's house like 24-7 to know what he goes through? You've seen, you know, a couple hours with that person. Man, man, his brother and his wife, they agree together. You know, you, you, you always see, like, when the brother says something, his wife compliments his answer. And man, how come you don't do that? Okay, was you there last week when they was arguing? There was something going on, and it took some time, you know, to resolve the issue. And then there was that one again. You, you don't see those, but now with our wives or the, hus the wife towards the husband, I wish he was like brother so and so. Well, that's what Paul was going to in, in 1 Corinthians 7. Where now we allow Satan, now you, you find him fault. You just, he's like, you're just dwelling on negative stuff, right? Not to say that we don't address the negative things, but don't make it into a way where now, instead of like, like building a marriage, you finding ways to kind of like bring it apart. And that's what Christ was going into Lowell and for sake of time, we might not have time to go into it in Matthew 19. But that's the same spirit that the Pharisees was coming to Christ. At. You know, oh, according to the law, according to Deuteronomy 24, is it lawful to put your wife away, you know, for any reason? Like, think about that question. Like, if Christ says yes, okay, now they're finding little things, little loopholes and, and things that they don't desire in their wife because they're lusting after another woman. Now they're going to be basing off Deuteronomy 24. Christ went be, before that. Christ went from the beginning when the Most High went through him, created Adam and Eve, and an established marriage. He told them that what? From the beginning, Most High made man and and. and and, and, and his wife to be what? One flesh. The man was going to leave father and mother and cleave what? Unto his wife. They twin shall be one flesh. So what does that mean? And Christ said, in, in, uh, except it before it, for the sake of fornication, you're not to put your wife away. Right? And if you do so, we're in judgment of that hellfire of being judged as what? A fornicator, an adulterer. So don't be trying to find little faults and things that could easily be resolved if, if we humble ourselves. 
one or both first parties in that relationship, right, see themselves that scriptures were not was not being applied. Okay, let's get into the scriptures. Where where did we go wrong? Like what's leading to this argument here? What's leading to where we, we harboring like ill feelings toward each, each other? And then speaking things and doing things that we shouldn't be doing. Well, let's continue in Tobit 8. That was the prayer that Tobias was 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 him and the sister Sarah, right? He saw it as his sister in Christ, right? As opposed to, you know, just it's I like her, she looks good, and, and man, I can't wait to lay down with her. No, he understood. This is this is important here. This is a, a like the scripture speaks about marriage, it's a, it's a weighty matter, right? It's not something to take lightly. Right? And and it's for what? For the extent of our whole life and unto what? The grace of life to come. You see that? That's what that's what Abraham was minded towards Sarah. Right? In the resurrection, that they're gonna be what? Joined together again as husband and wife, right? Unto the grace of eternal life. Do we see our wives like that? Do we desire that, you know, when we pass away, whether you go first or she goes first and and then later on, you know, we're both in the grave, falling asleep. Do we desire to be risen together, right, at the second coming of Christ and then to be joined together as husband and wife, right, in the kingdom of heaven? Or do we, I, I can't wait till I'm no longer with that person, like, is that what we should be thinking about? No, you're supposed to be rejoicing with your wife, right? Building that marriage, right? In the same fashion that, like it tells us in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the same way that Christ, what, loved the church, right? So let's continue. Verse 6, that made us, so we had Tobit 8 and 6 in the Apocrypha. That made us Adam and gave us an Eve, his wife, for an helper and a state, right? So what is the state part going into? Because she's she's a help meet, right? You need that help. So she needs a, the help from the husband as to be her guide, right? Her leader in Christ. And then she he needs a man, needs the wife, right? To be that helper in the state. So what is the state part going into? She's a stay unto you. What's the opposite of state? To go, right? Separate. Or not being there when, when you need that person. Right? If someone's a tower against death, meaning that's somebody you can lean on. Like that's that's a, a protection, right? So if she's not there, what good is that wife? Uh, the husband come home, either she's not gonna be there, right? Or she's not gonna be there in spirit. Like he doesn't know what he's coming home to. Right? Yelling, grieving him, right? Not cooking, disrespecting him, right? And again, saying this is not to just like make the focus like the wife being evil or wicked. Because then, what about the other side, right? The husband now he's not sub submitting himself and being subject unto Christ as his head. Right? The sister now on the opposite side, she don't know what type of a uh, husband she's gonna come home to, right? Flying off the handle, like the scripture speaks about how you're not to be a lion in your house. Right? When you think about a spirit of a lion, there's a the lion devours the prey. Right? The lion is is, is there's, there's no restraint. So should we be like that at home? Having having that authority, no go all that means is that what? To establish order. Right? But the, 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 the house being built upon Christ means that there's going to be what? Love there. There's going to be compassion there. There's going to be charity there. There's going to be mercy there. Right? Just as Christ is over the church, Christ is not walking around like Peter. You know what? We already know Christ is our head. He's our master. He's our leader. He created us. Christ don't have to do anything to prove that. It's known. It's common knowledge. Right? And then Christ... The, the love that he had for us so much he, that in the scripture, he says he calls the disciples, all his believers, what? Friends, not even servants. Imagine that. Like Abraham was known as the friend of God. Well, so I, like, I don't need friends. Like I created you, Abraham. 
it, most I had that relationship with Abraham was like, that's my friend. Man, so you know Abraham had to really please God, right? Not that Abraham was perfect, right? But what? He was faithful. He trusted in God. He didn't, he didn't question God. He didn't challenge God. Yeah, Abraham made his mistakes, but it was to the point where Abraham was a faithful servant and most high, so he considered him as his friend. And then Christ is saying the same thing unto his believers, we're his friends, right? So if we take in our lead from Christ and how Christ is the guide and the head of the church, how Christ is instructing the church, well, it's going to be coupled with what? When you see our, our wives, and in the case, brothers and sisters that have children, right? You love your children. Right? You don't despise your children, although they know their place. Right? Your children is not equal to you. You're not sitting with your child. Okay, so what are we gonna eat? Today? Yeah, you can ask them. What do you? Okay, what do you, what do you guys got a taste for? But ultimately, the husband and the wife, right, together working together, they're deciding what's best for the children out of the scriptures, right? In certain cases, oh, you know what? Let's let's have some fish and this that. The other. You know what? Yeah, we haven't had some fish in a while. Your son made that suggestion, right? It don't mean that now he gets to say, wake up, hey, I want spaghetti. Like, I want this, I want that. Like, no, we're not having that today. So today is this, that, the other. So that's what? It's order in the house, right? So same thing for the, the husband and the wife, right? Let's hold this. Well, a couple more scriptures and we'll end. But let's, let's finish this before we get the next scripture. We're going to finish uh, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter 2 first. So, continuing on in verse 6, Tobit 8 and 6. So, we covered the helper in the state. So, it says, of them came mankind. Right? So, we understand, you know, of Adam and Eve came all mankind. So, after Most High brought the flood, the world was repopulated through Noah, you know, through Noah's three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, right? So, but again, that's a whole different topic on that, so we're not going to dwell too much on it. So, thy has said, it is not good that a man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid alike unto himself. So, there's a lot being said in this couple, uh, in that sentence there. So, who has said? Who is who's the, who's the prayer unto that, that to, Tobias is praying to? The Most High. See, so he's, he's acknowledging the most high in the marriage between him and the sister Sarah here, right? So we have to have a pattern of our marriage, right? It's not, okay, yeah, people get married all the time. So people go to the justice of the peace and they, they don't understand where's, who established marriage? What was the, 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 the blueprint of the marriage? And in the marriage, what is the order in the marriage? People in this world, they don't look at marriage like that. Right? But we in Christ, we know better, or we should know better. So Tobias acknowledging the Most High through Christ, you said that it is not good that a man, that man should be alone, right? Because Most High's will is gonna be done. He could have done it, however, but he decided, right? Adam needs a help me. He needs a stay, right? And it says, let us make unto him an aid. So the aid is going back to the helper and the state part. So the sister's role, she's an aide, right? And in that aid, it, 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 there's a lot that goes with it, right? Because remember, Mosai, so Christ told him what? Be fruitful and multiply. So fruitful in a way where in righteousness, right? As you come together, right? The bed being undefiled, well, in certain cases, right? Children come out of it. That's how the world is being repopulated. So again, goes back to what is the makeup of a marriage is between a man and a woman, a husband and his wife, right? So we could have another class on this whole LGBT movement thing here. So we already know that's foolishness. Men with men, women with women, that's abomination, right? Most I never made uh, uh, relationships to go down that way, marriages to go down that way, right? So the latter part of verse says, let us make an aid unto an aid like unto himself. So is the woman of herself, like I got my own mind. I, I could think for myself. I don't need a man to tell me what to do. Oh, who should be patterned after? A 
on based on this verse here. Let us make an unto him an aid like unto himself. Right? So your woman is supposed to be a reflection of who? Of you. And then it doesn't stop at you. The man is a reflection of who? Christ. You see the order? And then Christ is a reflection of who? The Most High. That's why the whole holiness, righteousness in the marriage comes about. Now, if, if, if you have divisions in the marriage, you have disorder in the marriage, right? Are they one flesh? Because we could say one flesh. Okay, but what is that one flesh? Christ being the foundation in the marriage. That's what that one flesh means. People throw out terms like your, 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 your other half. Or they say foolish things. Your better half. Is, is the wife the better half of the, the two? Like, what kind of foolish thing is that? Is the man the better half of the two? No. <laughs> because if, if we're looking at it in a, in a worldly way, and then, then you have the, 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 the man, you know, like, he gives the, the, the praise and glory to the woman. Like, he, he, he diminishes his role, right? And then she, she's literally, figuratively, wears the pants, right? So your, your wife at home, she may be Israelite sister. She doesn't, you know, physically wear pants, right? For sure shouldn't be. But what about in mind? What about in thought? By, by wearing pants, I'm going into where she feels like she's the head of the house. She's the guide of the house. She instructs the house. Is that how it's supposed to be? Well, no, she's supposed to be an aid light unto the man. The first marriage, Adam. Where did that, where did that connection break? Because it was supposed to stay like that. Did it continue like that between Adam and Eve? Where... Eve always reflected and looked at Adam as I'm going to pattern myself about after Adam, everything that Adam taught me in, 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 in to resemble the commandments of God. I got to abide in that. And then later, but how about Adam? Who was, who, what was, who was Adam made in the image of, according to the scriptures? The most high through Christ, right? The commandments are righteous to the most high. See, so once you break that connection, whether the man with Christ or the woman with her husband or both of them together against the Most High in Christ, they, there's your disorder in marriage. You brought another God in the house. You don't have a physical idol, but the mindset, right? The philosophy, the way of life is worldliness. No longer is, is this house being raised and, and guided by the commandments of the Most High in Christ. See, and that's what Tobit was making sure that let's establish. Let's, you and I, Sarah, let's acknowledge that the Most High in Christ, he's the foundation of our marriage. All right? So verse 7. And now, O Lord, I take not this, my sister, for lust, but uprightly. So how was he going to take her? He was going to lay down with her, right? Consummate the marriage. Right? So that's part of the marriage, right? Laying down with your woman, you know, sexually. That's supposed to be what? Your wife. Between that sexual relationship is between a husband and his wife. Well, we just see each other, you know, in passing, or we visit each other. But the marriage is not being made as far as being guided and being instructed and being led by Christ. In there. That's why you said this is not for love. This is not... I saw her, she looked good, and, you know, that's that's what I've always wanted in, in a wife. That was like the perfect, you know, yeah, that's that's part of it, right? The beauty is part of it, but is that the whole makeup of the marriage? No, right? Because we quoted the scripture in Proverbs 31, right? Beauty favors the seafold and beauty is vain, but a woman that fe fears the most high, she shall be praised, right? So, Continuing on, therefore, mercifully. See, so we have to we have to pray that the Most High's mercy is extended upon us in the marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And don't take it for granted. It says, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together, right? You have you have um, husbands and wives, right? They're aged together, right? Fifty-five years together, sixty years together, but are they aging together in Christ? 
That's 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 the main thing that we have to look in the relationship. How are they growing together? Are they maturing together in Christ? Or are they just staying together for the sake of the children? Or for the sake of what people will say, but there's really no love in the marriage. Right? And in saying that, that's all of us, right? That's for all of us, right? As far as the, the growth and, and, and understanding and the experience and, and then building the knowledge, the wisdom that we get out of Christ, right? To build a marriage. It's not saying that, you know, or specifically singling out one family, one household. That's all of us need that word. That's what scripture says, that him that think if he standeth, what? Take heed lest he fall, right? Because Satan could come 40 years into your marriage with a temptation. 50 years, 60 years into the marriage, right? This as we was reading in the scriptures. Satan could come at you with your father, your mother, your son, your daughter later on. Everything could be rosy right now. Everybody's in the spur. We're in the scriptures together. But Satan come with a temptation, right? And he comes at the things that's the closest to you, right? The ones that, that's, that's the, 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 your loved ones, that's close and dear to you. Husband towards a wife, wife towards a husband, your children, right? a good friend, your relative. Now, at that day, when we have to look at, okay, is this person about Christ or is that person about the world? The decision should be seamless. The decision should be easy in a way where, just as Peter said, we've forsaken all Christ. See? Do we want to see brothers and sisters depart? No. That's not the hope. We don't pray for that. But every man has to abide in the calling that they was called and stay in Christ. That's the point. So, verse 8, and then we'll go back to 1 Corinthians 7. And she said with him, Amen. So, if she's saying that, meaning she's in agreement. She's in one accord. She's not doubting. I don't know about that, Tobias. Uh, okay. Or she's saying it just to say it, but really her mind is on other things. Her mind is on worldliness. Yeah, I really like how Tobias look. I'll, I'll just see how this works out. And then if things go sour, I'll go my separate way. No, she, Tobias got his part to do to, to, as far as in building their marriage. And then she has her part in being that helper in the state, right? To make sure that what neither one of them allows Satan to come between that marriage. And as long as they acknowledge the Most High, as long as they stay in Christ, they'll be able to do it. And that same thing applies for us. Right? So let's go back to 1 Corinthians 7. First Corinthians 7, verse 28. It says, but, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Right? As long as that marriage is based upon the most high in Christ being that foundation, as we was just reading in Tobit. Right? And if a virgin marry, right? so you may have a case where a brother or sister came in as a virgin, never had dealt in sexual relationships in the past. Right? And so over time, they came in, they learned the gospel, they continue in it, they're growing, they matured in the scriptures. And then, you know what, initially they may have said to themselves, you know what, I'd rather abide as a virgin right now. Right? Maybe a year later, two years, ten years down the road, we don't know. Most High's a matchmaker. Most High brings someone where, you know what, yeah, that's, that's the Most High bringing us together, similar to, to, to Tobias and, and, and Sarah. Right? And Paul is saying here in the Spirit, and if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. I mean, it's not wrong. So Paul was never teaching for people to stay single and marry, right? Like we got the Catholic Church, you know, with the priests and the nuns. We already know that that, that whole foolish devil doctrine thing here, where they're supposedly going to remain celibate and not deal in, in, in sexual relationship, but they're fornicating. Now these wicked priests, you know, molesting children and all kind of foolishness going on in them churches, right? But yet they, they've taken some, some oath, you know, where they're not going to lay down and, and mess and, and deal in, in sexual relationships. That whole foundation of the doctrine is wicked to begin with. That's idolatry. So we already know how that goes. Right? But in the faith of Christ, 
this is kind of one of those things that's that's a choice you, it's not we're not promoting okay brother you have to be married or you know promoting his sister or brother stay single but what did Paul say the latter part of the verse if there come a time where you know most allows a marriage to go down between a man and a wife and a sister right you say what you've not sinned but the latter part of the verse is nevertheless but he said keep this in mind that is something to go in into the relationship and into this is a fact of life right in this present world when we're dealing in marriage he says nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh but i spare you so what he's saying here what type of trouble in the flesh is he referring to well we was reading it in mark 10 right the persecutions that's going to come with the houses and the brothers the sisters the lands wives husbands he says what but i spare you so when he says you have trouble in the flesh what is that going into and then when he says he spares us in this particular letter right because there's other letters paul goes in depth as far as marriage and paul himself wasn't married but again he said he was speaking in the spirit by the grace that the most high through christ had upon him right so it ain't like paul is saying i'm not going to touch up on marriage and this topic here as far as what those troubles could go into he said just for now like there's going to be times where you know i will get into it right but for this present situation here he said you know I'll hold my peace on it. So what was the trouble in the flesh that Paul was referring to? That as all of us presently married or, or some that's, you know, single or they're, they're virgins, they're not married yet, but they're reading these scriptures and, you know, and possibly, you know, they're considering, you know, praying, outside, just, you know, I desire to be married. But what is this trouble? N knowing that Paul warned, Give a, gave us a warning or something to, to be aware of. Okay. Temptations, right? Let's, let's, let's read it here, right? So, so we can understand Matthew 19. We'll just end it in this chapter here. Let's see where Paul got that wisdom from as far as the trouble in the flesh that he was speaking about. So we'll, we'll end the lesson here and maybe Lord will and Mike go back into part two in this topic here but let's summarize it here in Matthew 19 let's see well let's read it from the from verse 3 so we can get it in context but the point is in the later verses so Matthew 19 and 3 the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. See, so already we know that these guys here, they come, they're not coming unto Christ to learn of the wisdom that comes from the Most High, right? They, many of them, not all of them, many of them thought that they didn't need Christ. They're masters of the laws, they're teachers of the law, and, and they're righteous, right? They, they're holier than thou, and so Christ to them is it's just a prophet or just uh, the carpenter's son so we, could, so we can understand so this question here is a loaded question that they're about to ask Christ it says and saying unto him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause right so already we know that they're not coming in, in the spirit of humility or a spirit of a little child wanting to be learn the understanding of the scriptures or wisdom of the scriptures that only Christ could give us Right. So, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So when you, you read sentences like that where it says, Have ye not read? Or it is written here. Automatically what goes through your mind, okay? This, this, there's a particular scripture that's being quoted here, right? In the Law and the Prophets. So where is Christ getting the statement here as far as out of the law and the prophets that he's quoting from where well, he's, he's coming back because these guys were supposed to be 
teachers of the law, masters of the law, the Pharisees, right? Scribes, high priests. Okay, you come in and asking Christ, can you put away your, your, your wife for every cause? Like every cause. Like it's an open thing. You make up a cause. Right? But in, in reading, and again, they, they, they refer, in, well, let's, let's, let's um, cover the part as far as where was he getting that? Where was Christ getting that information from out of the law and the prophets that he was quoting? Genesis, the second chapter, right? When the Most High said that it's not good for man to be alone, for Adam to be alone. And he gave him a help me, a helper in the state, right? And as we was reading in Tobit, the eighth chapter, she was made like Adam, right? So read it on. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. So for what cause? For the, for the cause, for the purpose of what? Mar marriage, right? And again, we're not just saying marriage like open-ended marriage because you talk about marriage in this world. Oh, I'm married. You know, you got some, they go to Vegas for the weekend, come back, I'm married. You know, just that marriage is not based on the, the same prayer that we was reading about to Tobias and Sarah. Before they lay down together. Now people be together for 10 years. But we're not married though. Like, wait a minute. You're doing everything that entails marriage, but you're not married. So what are you then? You're fornicating, right? Because it's either marriage or it's fornication. According to the scriptures. It's one of two things when it comes to, to laying down in a bed and, 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 and in engaging in sexual intercourse. You're either married, and that marriage, again, is based on, as we was reading here, from the beginning, Most High made them male and female. So anyone has problems with that? Oh, where does it say it can't be two guys or two women or a woman that thinks she's a man now, the man thinks she's a woman? All kinds of foolishness. Right? That's wickedness. That's, that's, those are satanic ideals that people go by. Right? Where I think I'm born this, or I think I was really born that, but... My spirit, my mind, my body's telling. Oh, most high didn't make mistakes. Most high made two types of, of, of people, male and female. Right. And he says, and for the for this cause, right, for the purpose of marriage, right, a man shall leave father and mother. I Meaning now his responsibility is shifted towards what, his wife. Right. And we didn't read that. Paul kind of went into that. A little bit details in first corinthians the seventh chapter that's what one of the reasons that he was also like promoting or you know in a way where in the spirit saying that it's good for a man to be to remain as he was being single unmarried because the married person is gonna have care for what for the spouse right because now your responsibility is yeah we, we call it be service of the most high through christ but you got responsibilities at home you got a wife and then sometimes children Right. So your focus is, OK, as you learn to be a, a worshiper of the most high through Christ, you got to make sure that what you instruct in your household with it, beginning with your wife. Right. So you have that uh, another level of responsibility aside from just just you being by yourself. Right. So that's the other side of it. And Christ is going to go into it here as well. And so read it on. So the latter part of verses and they. Twain shall be one flesh. Right? See, so what does it mean now? They twain shall be one flesh. Yeah, physically, you're two separate beings, right? Two separate people, but you're being what? Joined together, right? In one, like in a, in a unit, right? It's a union. Right? That coming together in a the, in the marriage is, is, is being established by what? By the scriptures, by the most high, by the commandments of God. Right? So now the man's mind is after Christ, and then the woman's mind is after the man's mind, which is what? Based upon him learning of Christ. So that's what makes it one flesh. So it's it's not one flesh if yeah, we we together. You know, we've been married for 10, 20 years, but you together in, in worldliness. You're not one flesh. That's, and by the way, that's not marriage, right? It's fornication, right? So verse six, 
Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together. See, so understand that both the man and the woman have to acknowledge that who brought them together. If, if you acknowledging that the Most High brought us together, well, let's, let's abide by the commandment of God in this marriage. Right? And if Satan's trying to come in, let's shut it down. If there's any, you know, problems, issues, arguments, the solution is what? Where do we get the solution from? The same entity that brought us together. <laughs> right? How, how are we brought to, we acknowledging God brought us together. Well, let's go see a psychiatrist. Let's go see a, you know, a, a mediator. Let's go see, you know, somebody that's, let's go read this book. You know, uh, this guy is, he's an author on marriages and, like, wait a minute. No, Most High brought us together. Right? And if the Most High brought us together, well, the answer's in the scriptures. Christ said, learn of him. He's meek, he's lowly. But we want to do it ourselves. We want to, you know, address the situation ourselves, which means that what? We're neglecting Christ. And we lean upon our own understanding. All that's going to do what? Is further destroy the marriage. Right? So if Christ is saying, what therefore God, the Most High, has drawn together, let not man put asunder. So in this case here, we was trying to put asunder marriages. So they're not speaking here when they're asking Christ this question here about lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause. They're thinking about themselves, beginning with themselves, and then now they're going to be that bad example unto the rest of Israel. So some way, somehow, they want to break up their marriages, right? Let's get Christ to sign off on it. But really, you don't believe in Christ. You're already asking Christ a tempting question because whatever Christ says, you're going to speak against it. You're going to do the opposite anyways. Right? They're trying to find fault in Christ for Christ to step out of the law. Well, Christ says, let's stay in the law. Right? you going into divorce, putting your wife away. Well, let's go to the very beginning before Satan came and try to, you know, you know, brought sin into this world. What was the most high about? Marriage, one union in Christ, right? And so verse 7 says, They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put away? So wasn't that answer good enough? If Christ said, let's go back to the very beginning. The purpose that most I brought Adam and Eve together was what? Not for them to go separate ways, but for them to continue together in one flesh. Well, Christ, what about Deuteronomy 24, right? Because that's what they're quoting here. Where Moses gave Israel a commandment that they were able to put their wives away, right? A bill of divorce. Well, what's, what is Christ's answer? Verse 8. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. See, so... Let's read the latter part. But from the beginning, it was not so. So if at any point we acknowledging that the Most High in Christ brought us together, we acknowledge that we, we're engaging in a marriage relationship and not fornication, well, when should the topic of divorce come into play? Then? Yeah, I think we, you know, we should call it quits. What is going on here? If divorce is, is ever part of that, that, that communication there. Christ said it in the verse. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. Was it the will of the Most High? No, it's the hardness of your heart. Meaning, you're not subjecting yourselves, humbling yourselves to follow the Most High's commandment and understanding that in a marriage, there will be troubles, there will be hardships. There will be temptations. There will be cases where we don't see eye to eye. Sometimes it's coming from the man. Sometimes it's from the woman. Sometimes it's both of them. Right? Sometimes it's financial situations. Sometimes it's, it's, it's the pressures of life that we have to engage in and deal with. And so now Satan finds a way to bring it into the house. Having a good day, you know, wake up in the spirit five hours into the day. Something small gets all blown out of proportion. We're like, how we get here? All right? Answer Christ said it. The hardness of your hearts. Like, wait a minute. Okay. And again, there's, like, we read scriptures on being patient. 
We read scriptures on correction, right? We read scriptures on on um, not like um, speaking evil, right? We need we read scriptures on loving your neighbor as yourself. Like in everything that we read, when it comes to the fruit of the spirit, where does it have to be first and foremost applied? Think about it. Like every time we read in scriptures on, on bring forth fruits meet for repentance, that has to be applied first and foremost with the man in the mirror. And in the case where you married, apply that home with your wife. And then the wife and the husband being agree, in agreement, apply towards the children. Right? Yeah, brother, you know, I, I can't rule my spirit. Brother, I get short-spirited. You know, I don't rule my tongue. I say things I just, okay, well, apply it in the marriage. Right? So there's times we, we say things, we, shouldn't have, we reacted. You know, we're trying to, like, like, deal with a situation in correction. How should we approach it? Should it be any different than me correcting, let's say I'm correcting Theo? Should the correction be any different than me correcting my wife? Is this the same spirit applies, same spirit of Christ applies? Charity, humility, considering myself. Okay, I'm going to consider myself when I'm speaking to Theo that, okay, the same way I would want Theo to speak to me, I'm going to speak to him and then I'm going to, you know, show him his fault, you know, apply mercy, you know, like be fair, you know, being just, you know, not not looking at it in a way where I'm I'm tipping over, you know, on Theo's side more, or then I'm going against Theo and I'm like making Theo feel like he's the worst thing. I'm coming down with the hammer on him. Oh. It's supposed to be done with, with equity, right? So now what about your wife? See, do we do we look at the scriptures like the same way? Well, if we don't. Christ is saying the answer is because of the hardness of our hearts. That's where the Most High allowed Israel, right? And said, if I don't intervene and allow him away, this woman to be, to give a, 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 a bill, right? Or a letter to allow her to be out of this relationship. It could be turned, it, it, this could get ugly to where now the wife turns up missing. The man puts his hands on his wife and the children. Right, bring forth an evil accusation against a woman, and then now she's being put to death because she's bound to this relationship. And this guy here, because of his hardness of his heart, doesn't see himself, doesn't want to humble himself, and then to want to work out this marriage. But because he's lusting, you know, he might do evil towards his wife. Right, but Christ said in the latter part of the verse, but from the beginning it was not so. Right, in the very beginning, he went to in Genesis, the second chapter. The sanctity of marriage was that what man leaves father and mother, right? And then cleave unto his wife, and then they twin become one flesh. And then in that one flesh, we're not supposed to be looking at it as maybe five years, maybe ten years. No, this is for life. And by life meanings right up until eternal life, until the kingdom of Christ being established on this earth. We're looking forward to be with our wife and being reunited with our wife and join with our wife in Christ. Right? Similar to how Abraham felt towards Sarah, his wife. Right? So let's read on. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. So what is the only cause for divorce, for a, a man putting away his wife or a woman, you know, severing that relationship, that, that marriage with her husband. Fornication. Fornication has to be involved. I mean, is this man went out of his marriage, laid down with another woman, or vice versa, the woman broke the sanctity of the marriage to her husband and then laid down with another man that is now her husband. That's the only cause that Christ said that you could be, we could be talking about divorce here. But anything outside of that, the scripture says what? Oh, brother, I put her away, you know, we didn't see eye to eye. Christ has said, what? You committed adultery. When the minute you put her away, and then you could deal with another woman. The same thing with the woman. She leaves her husband and it goes and then, you know, depart from her husband and then lays down with another man and then try to call that marriage. The scripture says what? She committed adultery. Now you're, being, you're in danger of being judged as adultery. 
and says, and whoso marry of her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. See, so now you got a whole domino effect of adultery going on, right? The, right down to the next guy or the next woman that that this brother goes and lay down with. Y'all, y'all involved in what in adultery? Because what the Most High have brought together should have never what been put asunder by either the man in that marriage or the sister in the marriage. Y'all got to work it out in Christ. Right? So verse 10. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So what was they referring to here? S something similar that Paul was going into in 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. It says, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. Because what really, so we can understand, what, what is Christ emph emphasizing as far as the only cause that, that is worthy of divorce is fornication is going on by either the man or the woman in the marriage. One of, one of them is fornicating. That's the only cause for, for us to say, hey, you know, I'm putting my wife away because she fornicated. So if Christ is saying that's the only cause for divorce, right? What does that tell us in the case for the disciples to come back and say this? If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So what are the disciples thinking about? Like, like what is, what's going through their mind? Christ telling them the only reason that you should be putting away your wife is if she fornicated. And then they say, man, well, you know what? It's not good then to marry. Might as well stay single. What is going through their minds for them to, to look at marriage that way? That I have to be with my wife. And the only way I could put her away is if she fornicated. Think about it. Was that? No, not more so fornicate. Because you fornicate, you right there. You, you that's great sin. That's an abomination. Theo. Yeah, if they're uh, still too open to divorce rather than follow what Christ said, which was only divorce, if that's still fornication. Think we're gonna. The answer is gonna. We're gonna read it, but I just wanted to kind of see what you're thinking first. Think about what Paul said. There'll be trouble in the flesh. Think about that statement where Paul said, if, they, if you marry, you've not sinned, but you'll have trouble in the flesh. Do, do we want trouble in the flesh? Do, we, do you want problems? Do you want arguments? Do you, but that's a fact. We're in the flesh. You might you want a perfect wife, but are you a perfect man? Sometimes we the one, the man is the one that brings the trouble. Right? And then we vex our wives and then we deal with issues. Sometimes it's a wife. Sometimes it's the children. Sometimes it's neither the husband nor the wife, but something in the world is kind of like affecting it to where it comes in the house now. Now there's like friction in the house, right? So we don't want that, right? So, and we know the only way out of the marriage, if you're already married, is fornication. So what could they be thinking about? Where Christ is saying, from the beginning, if you if you, if all our marriages, right, we get in an argument, we like, okay, divorce, it's divorce. I don't think this is gonna work out. And then we, we reflect back from the beginning. The Most High said, a man was leave, to leave father and mother, cleave unto his wife. And then the only Christ gave the the understanding. The only way we should be thinking about departing or severing the relationship, divorce is is fornication. What is that saying? You're going to have to deal with, as we read in Mark, the 10th chapter, the persecutions. You got, remember, remember Paul in, in Corinthians, I want to say 2 Corinthians 12, where he had the, um, the, this affliction that he went through, through Christ three times for. And then Christ told him that my grace is sufficient for you. What is the most high in Christ all promoting? We're going to go through trials. We're going to go through temptations it's to build you up. We got to go through that fire. See, we don't want to go through the fire. Like, we want to, is, is someone single going through the fire? As far as the temptations that they're going to have to go through? Yes. Is someone married going to go through it? Yes. Is someone with children going through it? Yes. Is someone without children going through it? Yes. 
But with every temptation, the Most High is going to make where wherein we able to bear it, right? We able to escape it by applying Christ, by applying the Scriptures, by humbling ourselves, right? So let's read that again, and I'll and then when we'll read it on through, so we can understand. It says, "His disciples say unto him." This is Matthew nineteen and ten. So we're almost done. If the case of the man be so with his wife, so the case means we have to understand what case Christ is talking about, that. He has to honor the marriage. The wife got to honor the marriage. Whatsoever the most I have brought together, let no, no man put asunder. See, we have to reflect. We can't put it asunder. Like, we got to work through it. We got to humble ourselves and work through it. Now, again, working through it means that both of us have to humble ourselves as far as both the man and the wife. Because that could be a case, and Paul went into that in 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. The unbelieving person don't want to continue. Right? You could do your best praying, fasting, let's stay in the scriptures, and we understanding that this is a marriage, but at some point, right, like the, the parable of the sower, people start giving place to, to worldliness, the flesh. The wives depart, right? Can the most high hold it against a man? Or the man departs. Can the most high will the most high hold it against the wife? No. Now as long as we don't have a part in the separation, we don't we're not the ones that promoted the divorce. The unbelieving person depart, that's on them. They're going to have to answer the Most High in Christ for that. But we shouldn't be the one, as far as either the man or the woman, shouldn't be the one that's trying to promote the divorce. Right? We should be reflecting upon the scriptures. Okay, we're together. We have to understand that just as Satan came at Christ, he's going to come at us. Right? And we got to stay in the scriptures. we got to apply the scriptures. You know, and there's many scriptures. <laughs> we could go into... Confessing our faults one to another, we could go into okay, what is it that's holding the man back or what's holding the woman back? So, those are classes in themselves. There could be charity not being applied there, it could be love not being applied, there could be selfishness not being applied there, it could be a number of things, right? But we have to address it in the scriptures. That's the point, right? So, the disciple says, if the case of the man be so with his wife, meaning you gotta go the extra length to continue in the marriage, right? Promote the marriage in Christ. Christ is the foundation. Let's not sit, let's allow Satan to come between us while we talk in divorce. So then the disciple says, it's not good to marry then. Well, is, is that the answer? Because some people, I should have stayed sick. I should have. No, you, you married, you, you married now. There's no going back, right? If we're acknowledging that, now, again, I'm not saying if you together because we have to find out what the relationship is. Just because a man's with a, wife, a woman don't mean that y'all that's a marriage because you have to acknowledge how y'all came together. What was the foundation of this relationship based on? And that's not for, for me to say. That's for every man and the woman to sit down, okay? We're acknowledging that the Most High Christ brought us together. Are, are we perfect? No. <laughs> None of us is perfect. We work and we're building a marriage. Even Tobias in the prayer with Sarah, that wasn't the end of the, that's the only prayer, the only time they pray. They're praying together every day. That most high extending that mercy that they continue in the grace of life together, right? So read in verse 11. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive the same, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, right? So you may have men that was born incapable of engaging in sexual relationships, right? So they, they so it's kind of like they're born that way, right? And where for them, they're not minded upon marrying or dealing in relationship like that with a woman, right? And then it says, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, right? So you, you read in the case of certain kings, like they had, you know, the, the eunuchs over their concubines. So how were they made eunuchs? Their private parts was <laughs> castrated, right? To make sure that this man don't be dealing with the king's wives or the, his concubines. He, he's, he's tending to their needs, but make sure that he doesn't have that desire to lay down with them. So they, these men, they were made that way by men, right? And then he said, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake, right? 
So who who could we relate to that part here? Where he said, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. So physically, they, they don't have a problem as far as being able to lay down with a woman, right? But they made themselves eunuchs in that fashion as far as, you know, like, in their minds, they're like, you know what, this is not for me. I'm, I want to remain single and then just focus on serving the most high, right, without the extra responsibility of a wife and then children with that. What, what, who could we uh, think of in the scriptures that, that chose to remain that way as far as a, a eunuch and dedicate himself to just, I want to be a servant of the most high in that fashion without adding a layer of a wife and children in it? Paul. Paul, right? That's a very good example. But remember, Paul said that he was not speaking in a manner of this being a commandment. Like he's saying, remain single. Look at me as an example, you know, Think about the troubles, brother. You don't want these troubles. Like, is that an advice that we should be giving a brother sister? No. Remember, Paul said you were speaking not in a commandment, but what? Based on the, the grace I was giving unto him. He said, this is my judgment. This is just my, this is, it's almost like you warning someone. Like, brother, you single now? There's a lot of the scriptures tell you when you're dealing with in marriage, that's a weighty matter. That's not just something you take lightly. Right, it goes all the way back to what Christ was saying from the beginning. Most High made man, made male and female, right? And then the commandment was what they were to be joined together in the sanctity of marriage unto the grace of life. And what therefore the Most High brought together, together, let no man put asunder. So even in the trials, even in the temptations, even in, in problems and issues, let's work it out. If we love the Most High in Christ, we love one another. As we love ourselves, right? We should not let we should not let anything come between us in this marriage. You know, ourselves, any outside forces, your your mother, your father, in laws, friends, people, you know, giving you bad advice. Girlfriend, leave him. Oh man, come on, bro. Like, there's a lot of other women out there. Why are you messing around with her? Cut her off. And that's what the Pharisees were trying to do. They're lusting, so they're trying to find loopholes or any reasons to justify the divorce. Whereas Christ, he's promoting marriage. He's not pro promoting separation of divorces. Right? And so that's why the disciples is asking, man, okay, that's going to be a, a huge responsibility. That's a huge weight that we're going to have to deal with in marriage. Maybe it's good to just stay single. Well, what did Christ say? It's not for everybody. It's, that's what Paul was saying the same thing. Some people choose to remain that way. Some people are born that way. It's not for everyone, right? And then it says, the latter part of verse 12 says, he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. See that? Now, let, let that be of the Most High in Christ. If that's what the Most High in Christ is showing you, right? You may have a brother or sister that's single and they want to remain that way. And you're trying to push marriage on that. No, right now, I want to focus on myself, Right? Maybe later on, maybe, I don't know. I'll wait on the Most High in Christ. If it comes to that point, let the Most High show, right? And that's a good thing, <laughs> remain in that, all praises, right? But if you marry too, we not shouldn't be promoting divorce. What? So you're saying you did this or that? Okay, are we talking fornication here? No, no, there's no fornication. My husband ain't laid down with another woman or, or the husband's talking about her wife. That's No, she didn't go outside of the marriage. It's just that. She's kind of, you know, she's rebellious in certain things. And then certain things I'm trying to show a, a instructor in the house. She wants to do her own self-will. And she, okay, well, what are we talking here? You know, are you part of the problem? Or, or is, is she, does she love the most high? Does she love you? Does she want to continue in this marriage and build a marriage together with you? Yeah, you know, she's saying that this about well, you got to put in the work. You know, there's things maybe you might be neglecting, brother. Or there's things that, you know, you got to make sure, you know, you stay on her. You know, you be patient with her. You know, again, we didn't read, um, because Christ summarized it in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, right? Let's just read it real quick and we'll end there. Ephesians 5. And then maybe next lesson we might go into it a little bit more in depth as far as verse by verse 
So, in Christ explaining as far as Mosai from the beginning through Christ, because Christ is the author of marriage. Christ created Adam and Eve. And he's the one that instructed them to be fruitful and multiply and continue in that marriage and to not allow Satan to come between them. But we know they didn't continue in that, right? That's why you had the disorder in marriage. That's why you had Cain that killed Abel. So when you start dealing with idolatry, you introduce all manners of wickedness in your homes, right? So verse 22. Uh, Ephesians 5. You know what, to read it and really get the understanding, we'll have to kind of go through to the end of the chapter. We'll, uh, we'll mark this for the next lesson. Lord, really. I don't want to kind of fly through it. I kind of touched up a, a little bit on it, but it will be good to read it as well. So when we are dealing with, as Paul was mentioning in, in marriage, you'll have trouble in the flesh, but he said, I spare you. Well, other verses, other letters he wrote, he didn't spare. <laughs> he went into it, right? He didn't Paul, who's the author of Ephesians, the sixth chapter here? <laughs> who, who wrote, who's the author of Ephesians? The book of the Ephesians in the Bible. Is it Moses, Elijah, Isaiah? The book of the Ephesians, who wrote that? Now I was waiting for Kamara to answer. I knew you knew, and Gabar knew. Did you know who wrote it, uh, Kamari? No, it's, it's 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 Paul. Right? Let's um, go to Ephesians, the first chapter. Uh, what was it? Well, not particular in this one, but there 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 is um, not in the first chapter because sometimes Paul will say address as far as. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Ephesians the first chapter. <laughs> Ephesians 1 and 1. So read that al al aloud, um, Kamari. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. All right. So, Lord willing, next time, if the question is posed to you or someone may ask you, who wrote um, the book of Ephesians, right? And then we, we know that who are the Ephesians? Who, who in Ephesus that he was writing this letter to, right? It's not open letter to everyone dwelling there because you had the other nations dwelling there, right? The Greeks and the other nations. Well, so specifically, even this letter here was written to the church, the brothers and sisters that was repenting in Christ at those synagogues, right? So, but the point was, Paul is the author of the book of the Ephesians, right? The same as he being the author of um, the Corinthians, right? First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. So in, in First Corinthians seventh chapter, he said he was sparing as far as going into the details, right? But then you read Ephesians of the fifth chapter, he brings it right back to okay. You want to know how you, you a husband, how you deal with your wife, a, a wife, how you're gonna be dealing with your or seeing your husband as? It goes right back to Christ, and in the same way, Christ. He loved the church. He nourished the church. He cared for the church. He had patience with the church. Right? He healed the church. Right? He, he instructed and taught the church in love and had compassion upon them, even in the times his disciples were saying things they shouldn't be saying, doing things they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, Peter, get out of here. You the, you, you savoring the things of Satan. I don't wanna I don't want to deal with you no more, Peter. That's it. Peter denied Christ three times. Right? When when Christ was, was, was about to be killed on the cross. Hey, wasn't you one of his disciples? Wasn't you one of those guys that was with him? Nah, you uh, confused him with somebody else. And Christ already told him, you're going to de deny me three times before the cock was, was to crow. And then when Peter did it, he realized, man, it hit him. Christ said that. Christ prophesied that out, that would happen. But even in that, Christ didn't say, okay, you know what, Peter? I'm, I'm replacing you with another prophet. So Christ had patience with the, the disciples, with Israel as a nation. So what about husband towards his wife, right? And then now how should the wife be behaving herself 
as she's being instructed, you know, by her husband in the scriptures, in love, in patience, in charity. The scripture says, well, the wife, see that what you reverence your husband. Right? Now, does that apply 24-7? <laughs> The, the husband, you know, he's seen himself as, as, you know, applying Christ and then being that example in Christ in his house. And then the wife following suit and then the children fall. Is that, does that happen 24-7? Oh, we would love it to be that way. Right? But Satan walking to and fro, any little bit of opportunity, any little kinks we leave open, we crack the door open just a little bit. Satan get his foot in. So Satan will get in, right? But how do we address it when that happens, right? By, by Satan getting in, meaning he's coming with the temptations, right? Let me clarify it that way. Because right? we shouldn't be sinning against each other, speaking evil towards one another, you know, um, provoking one another, right? But we're still in the flesh. We're still growing. We're still putting off the works of the flesh and we're trying to put on Christ daily. When we do slip, does that mean it's the end? Of the brother being in the faith, the sister being in the faith, and sever the marriage, divorce, kick the children out of the house. No, as long as that we come in in the spirit of repentance, right? We seeing ourselves, we humbling ourselves, right? There's always hope, right? But the point was, these are the troubles and the temptations that in marriage we're gonna go through. Right? We read about the troubles and during the troubles of education, right? with the children and sister in the Maccabees the seventh chapter goes into that. She raised them and then at a time where they had to make a heavy decision whether to conform with the Greeks or to die manfully for the most high's commandments, she reminded them. Like from youth. Y'all wasn't born speaking the commandments and walking in the commandments. Y'all remember the whipping when you was doing this and you was going out and hanging out and doing things you shouldn't have been doing? All right? You got past that. You grew and you matured and then you understood, okay, you know what? Foolishness is bound in a child. But there comes a time where the child got to put off the childish ways, right? Grow and become a man or become a woman in Christ. Now when the child is by themselves, right, meaning they're grown, they're in their own houses, they're going to reflect back on the scriptures similar to Tobias. Tobias is well away from his father and his mother. Satan, you don't think Satan was there? For him to kind of like deviate from the mission and then go do something else. He could have done that and then come back and lied and did something else. He fornicated. He was being a drunkard, a uh, reveler and all kinds of foolishness. But the most high would have known. Right. So the, the point being that. The, the Just like all the other topics that comes out in the spur shows. OK, go into this lesson here. Right. Remember Christ in Revelation, the first chapter, when he was having John write the letters, he was saying, this is the letter that you're going to write to the, the minister or the bishop in this particular church here. Focus on this. Right? One of them, you know, there's a sister with the spirit of Jezebel in there. She's causing these, the brothers to fornicate. Right? That's the doctrine that's being pushed in that, that church here. Tell the brother to get that, that straightened out, the bishop there, the, the minister there. Right? And others, he was telling them, look, some things you're doing right, other things you're not doing right. Make sure you get your house in order and then now instruct that to the church. Well, can we neglect marriage in the lessons as far as all in the applications at home? That's every, like the brothers and sisters, that's, that's married, that's work. Whether they've been married for one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. And it really comes down to, when you think about it, staying in Christ, right, and the humility that comes with Christ, and then your faith gets built up, your patience gets built up, right, your experience gets built up. Right? And I'm sure all of us that's married here, there's things that maybe five years ago, ten years ago, we didn't kind of know it as we should have known it, right, and then we look back, man, like, there's things that easily I could have been given place to Satan now. You know, had I not experienced it in, the, in times past, and then uh, the mercy, like Tobias was praying, that extend your mercy, your grace, that we may continue together. Right? We, it's not of ourselves. Brother, how, how are you still married so long? Brother, it's Christ. As Christ loved the church, he nourished the church. And then in that, it's not, brother, 
I'm the example. I'm perfect. No, Christ is the example. Right? So any anything that we, we go through, right? Okay, when Christ was persecuted, how did he deal with it? Right? Because Christ is the he's the he's the author in being the high priest. Where anything that we go through, Christ could relate. Christ is married to the nation. So Christ knows about, you know, infidelity. Christ knows about uh, people going astray. Uh, brother, Christ wasn't married. And, well, the whole nation fornicated against the Most High in Christ. <laughs> Most High created us. He created marriage. He knows the things that we go through. Right? But let's not be like the Pharisees, or in, in particular the ones in Matthew 19, that, that's seeking to be loose, Right? And then not understanding that just like with everything as far as in this faith, we got to put in the work. We can't be discouraged, right? We, we can't, like, look at it as I didn't know it was going to come down to this. Well, Paul, Paul said it. Christ said it. It's like, oh, well, it's not good then. Well, maybe, maybe some of the disciples, Peter, Peter was married, right? You would have you read about Peter's mother-in-law that was sick, right? So some disciples like Paul, he remained unmarried. But as Christ was saying, this is not for everybody, right? That's based on the spirit. And then in whatever particular situation you're in, if you're being called called being loose, meaning you're separate, you're not married, continue in that. If you're being called in the faith, being married, married with children, continue in that. Don't seek to be loose. But knowing in that, who's, who's at play? As the Most High in Christ is trying to build us up, grow, grow the church, build the church, who's trying to break down and, and destroy the church? Satan. And can Satan take advantage of the church? Because is Satan is, can Satan control us? Can Satan make us do something we don't want to do? No. That's what Christ said. What therefore the Most High have put together, brought together, let not man put asunder. Right, y'all, y'all want to get loose from your wife. That's why you come in here with with this loaded question here. And then I gave you the answer. Well, what about divorce in Deuteronomy twenty four? Well, do you know why? That was tolerated. That wasn't a commandment. Any cause put away. Any cause put away. Right? Because if she fornicated, what's the judgment for her? She's gonna go free, and then most high is not gonna judge her. No, she's gonna get judged. And then the husband fornicates, all right, you got to answer the most high on that. But, you know, whatever thing, and I'm not giving examples because we know, especially brothers and sisters that's married, it'd be little things that we like, okay, why would you arguing over some foolishness? Oh, because you wanted to go here, I wanted to go there. Like, that's just the surface. What, what, what is, what is the, the root of this problem here? We allow Satan to come in, right? We introducing idolatry into our relationship, into this marriage, and it's not—it's not to be, right? So we'll end here. Any questions from the brothers? All right. So Lord willing, we'll continue. Maybe next week. We still got to finish um, Corinthians, the tenth chapter, right? So if you be the most high, we'll 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 get we'll come back around into that. So. Again, it's based on the Holy Spirit, you know, so it's not about what topic we want to pick as far as any of the teachers, you know, we're trying to guide the church as best as we can through our part of the Holy Spirit, right? Because at the end of the day, we all got to give account, right? Individually and as a body, as a unit, we have to give account to the Most High through Christ. And we want to be found faithful, having done the will of the Most High through Christ, not you know, based on my program, your program, what we wanted to get out of this truth, we want to be in here together to, to promote the Most High in Christ in the spur. So we'll end here. We'll end with a prayer, and then um, we'll do the Lord's communion. So I'll praise the Most High in Christ for the class. The scriptures.
Uh, this is Psalm 26. We're going to bow down our heads and meditate in the prayer. It says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me by my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with assemblers. I have not hated the congregation of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, in innocence, in innocence. So will I compass thy altar, O Lord that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity, redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place, in the congregations will I bless the Lord. Our praise of the Most High in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that you extend your mercies, blessings, and healings upon the whole church, and that you may deliver us out of all our afflictions, our trials, our tribulations, and our shortcomings in this truth, that you may build us, guide us in the way of truth, and that we may take heed unto the scriptures and not depart from the commandments through your Holy Spirit all the days of our life, and that we may be found faithful, having done your will, through your grace and mercies, and that you may extend the kingdom of heaven upon us, and that we may rejoice in your righteousness at your second coming. In Christ's name we pray, that you may build the church and all the brothers and sisters throughout the whole world, that we may continue steadfast even unto the end. All praise the most high in the name of Jesus Christ and as we pray. Amen. 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 All right, everyone. At this time, we'll get ready to do the Lord's communion. So give us a moment to get the bread and the wine. Bless Sabbath to everyone. Okay. So, um, the channel again? Yeah, so um, as a reminder, we're still trying to get a few more subscribers. I believe what we need, what, 50 altogether? So we need about 50 subscribers to be able to um, to stream the class live on the on the YouTube channel. It's Apostles Doctrine Jacksonville. So brothers and sisters haven't um, subscribed yet, uh, we encourage you to do so. That way, not everyone uses the Facebook as a means to get the lessons, the live classes. So we'd like to be also be able to stream the classes on the YouTube channel. So if you have, appreciate it. And if you could pass on the word. So we need about six more subscribers. So we'd appreciate it. Lord will.
Uh, read of Matthew 26. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sis. Okay, so I'll read Matthew 26, 26. Listen on. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink, eat all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So this is one of the many scriptures we read. That explains the purpose of the Lord's communion. So, when Christ kept the Passover with his disciples, he instituted this ordinance. So, by ordinance meaning this is a commandment. So, this is something that Christ tells us to do daily. And in doing it daily, this is acknowledging that, you know, as far as this is an outward form of us demonstrating that we are a true believer of Christ, we believe in Christ, and we understand what his death burial, resurrection, and ascension in the heavens mean for us as his saints, as his believers. Right? So we eat a piece of unleavened bread, which represents Christ's body, broken on the cross for our sins, and we also sip, uh, we also drink a sip of red wine, which we read here, represents his blood. Right? In the scriptures we read um, today, that said that we was bought with a price, right? And that price is Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. But what's going into that? And so, in doing so, the scriptures tell us that we have to partake in this ordinance worthily. Worthily meaning that we're not perfect, but we constantly examining ourselves. We're considering that whether we truly walk in the faith of Christ. We're examining ourselves. And our shortcomings, the things that we still kind of hold on to, and when we allow ourselves to give place to Satan, we make making moves to work on it. Through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we're praying unto the Most High in Christ to give us the Spirit to be able to endure these temptations. So let's make sure that we, we mind it, right? Just as we keep all the other commandments, that we're not going through the motions, right? We're doing it in the spirit of Christ. So let's uh, bless the bread in the world. Well, ask the most high Christ to bless the bread. This communion. Let's meditate in the prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask and pray that you bless this bread and wine, which represents the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This we do in remembrance of you until your second coming. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, at this time, we'll uh, wrap up the feed for today. We're limited on time here, so we're going to have to move on pretty soon. So I'd like to say peace and blessings to brothers and sisters, the whole church, and the whole sign of Christ. Bless your homes and families, and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath, as well as a blessed week. So keep us in prayer, and likewise, uh, we'll pray for the whole church as well. God bless everyone. Shalom.